Hey, hey, everybody, it's Timothy with Mana Rocks, and thanks for joining me today. We're going to be doing our final Ravnica Allegiance draft, saying farewell to the format. Looking forward to War of the Spark, but not here yet. We've got about two more weeks until War of the Spark hits us, and uh, wow, does it look <laughs> complicated compared to our last couple sets. But Ravnica Allegiance has been a good set, and we'll give it a proper goodbye here. Um, maybe talk about some of the things I like and dislike about the format as we go along and hope for a good win. We're going to do a traditional draft, so two out of three matches all the way up to five wins or two losses, and we'll see how we do. Before we go ahead and jump into the draft, make sure you subscribe below if you like more content. I think by four should be completed for this set by now. I'm not sure how uploading them will work, but it's definitely all been recorded. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you like by force, um, be on the lookout for my reviews. I think I'm going to review all the planeswalkers separately and then go into the colors of the set. So, uh, keep an eye out for that once the set has been completely spoiled and find us on Twitter at MTG underscore mana rocks. would love to hear from you guys. Appreciate you spending your time here watching, especially with all the magic content going on, but enough about that. Let's give Ravnica allegiance one more whirl and can we just open Ethereal Absolution one time? Is that asking too much? Benthic Biomancer. Well, that's certainly no Ethereal Absolution. Um, which, yes, I still think is the best rare in the set. This isn't a rare that I ever really first pick. I would play it if I'm Simic. Um, I'd play it if I'm Azorius, but I'm not really looking to pick it up early. It would have to be basically the only pick here. I actually think the best card in the pack here is Consecrate Consume, and I think Consume is fantastic. Um, this is on par with something like a Mortify. I would definitely take a Mortify out of this pack. Otherwise, it's like an Aramunculus or ugh, an Aramunculus. Wilderness Reclamation is pretty bad. I've seen a couple good Wilderness Reclamation decks, but they had tons of Adapt and Flash and Instance and stuff like that. But I'm going to start off with Consume. Ooh, ooh, the Gate Colossus and the Basilica Bell Haunt. Uh, Rare was taken out of this pack, so no information we can really get from the bots here. Um, this is a great pack. I really just want to slam Colossus here, but how many times have I drafted Colossus in my decks? Everybody knows I love the Colossus. Basilica Bell Haunt is a nice little follow-up to consume, but it's so mana intensive. All right, we've done Colossus enough. Let's go Bell Haunt here. Blade Juggler is a nice follow-up. Blade Juggler is very good in Rakdos and just as good in Orzhov, even though people seem to think it's a Rakdos card, right? Uh, other than that, there's Summary Judgment, and note that if we had taken Gate Colossus, we would just be snapping the Guild Gate here, but I like me a Blade Juggler. And looks like I'm going to take Dovin's Acuity out of this pack. Um, the last couple drafts I've done... I've leaned towards Esper quite a bit, because I think Esper's fantastic here, but there's not really a good Orzhov card. I mean, there's Spirit of the Spires and Syndicate Messenger, which are both fine cards, but not great, and Dovin's Acuity is actually fantastic if I end up going down like an Esper route or something like that. Um, no Guildgate here, which I would consider Prowl and Caracol is not a card. And then there's Senate Griffin and Orzhov Waka. I'm just going to take Senate Griffin here. Know that we've got quite a few multicolor spells. There, look, second Goblin Gathering. How come when I draft the Goblin Gathering deck, I only get two? And yet, boom, here's two Goblin Gatherings in like the first six picks. Easy Arrestor's Admonition. Although, Clear the Mind, you know, a card that I would have considered completely unplayable. In fact, I'd be interested to go back and see what I said about the card. But Clear the Mind turns out actually playable, even though I'm not on high, as high on it as some of the other people. Take Slime Bind here. Wow, that's a late climber, Shaman. Probably just prying eyes. Nothing really else in the pack here. Got past a couple good Orzhov cards, and then things dried up. Dovin's Acuity, you know, good option here as well. Looks like we're definitely leaning towards some sort of Esper route. Blade Juggler, a little bit worse than like a Control and Dovin's Acuity deck. But, but prying eyes, fine. Wilderness Reclamation, not what we're looking for. I don't even like Gyre Engineer. I know people think this card's great, and when you get it on turn three, it feels nice, but this card just underperforms every time. I'm going to take the Guildgate here, the double off-color Guildgate. Here we go. I'll take a partially on-color Guildgate, and the rest of this pack's going to be pretty bad, although a Quench is a nice late pickup. Nothing here. Not even an uncommon for Vault Progress. This is nonsense. All right, I'll play a Locket, potentially. 
There's a clear to mind as well. We have, what, two instants so far? We're going into the next pack with another bust rare. I would like to go out with, a, you know, some fantastic rares and stuff, but I guess if we have to actually work for our wins, that's fine too. Let's get this guild gate out of here. It looks like we're going to take a guild gate out of pack two. There's Chillbringer, but I'm pretty split on black-white right now. In fact, my black cards are really good. Consume, Belhan, even Blade Juggler is fine here. But then I've also got this option to go down like a really control in Dovin's Acuity, clear the mind type deck. I still think I'm just going to take the Azorius Guildgate because good mana is good. Oh, there's a Breeding Pool. Um, Sphinx of New Prov. Wow, this pack's really good for us. Tempted to always take just like, you know, a land because it converts into gems, but we're, we're looking to have fun here, right? I already have my play set of Breeding Pools online. Sphinx of New Prov plus Basilica Bell Hunt in the same deck is very ambitious with one Guildgate. But I'm an ambitious person. There's also Summary Judgment, which works nicely with Dovin's Acuity. Let's see. Am I cutting black just playing Azorius? I'm probably going to take Sphinx here. I think the upside on this card is really high. Dang, High Alert? <laughs> it's Shark to Crab? We do have a Simic Guildgate here. Second Clear the Mine? Um, high Alert doesn't look like it does anything with our deck right now. <gasps> it makes our Bell Haunt a 4 4. Busted. Click. Uh, Shark to Crab is the best card. I could see potentially ditching black. Maybe going down like Bant route. Shark to Crab is huge and great. Yeah, well, let's let's speculate on. There's nothing else in that pack I'm super excited about. And here again, we, we don't have any black fixing. I guess we have a locket. Let's see what happens if we just cut black, but we'll keep it in mind here. We'll keep it in mind. Maybe even just like Splash Consume if we get like a couple Orzhov Guild Gates. Not that we have a lot of green cards either. Axe Bane Beast? Alright, a little bit of a waffle. Uh, Simic Guildgate. There's Essence Capture, which I do like in these sorts of decks. Pretty good with Shark to Crab. Maybe I just take the Simic Guildgate, though? Yeah, let's just take Guildgate here. Alright, there's a Grasp and Thrall. Fairy Duelist, a card that I've liked quite a bit. And actually, Orzhov Guildgate plus Gateway Plaza. I like my first Gateway Plaza over most of the other gates. Um, this is a little bit of a tough pick. I really like Fairy Duelist and I love Grasp and Throw, but I am actually going to take Gateway Plaza here. This is not the pack we opened, even though there's another Eyes everywhere. Could take Rampage and Renhorn, another Queer the Mind. Queer the Mind's not an instant, which makes it awkward do with Dovin's Acuity, and we're not full of removal. Um... So the second clear of the mine looks pretty bad. Eyes Everywhere is a card I've never actually played in my deck, but I respect it. In fact, let's let's try it out. We're going out. Let's let's try it out. Here's an Orzhov Guildgate over a Humungulus. Following up with another Slime Bind. I like just holding my opponent's creatures off here. Pretty nice. All right, we have Growth Spiral, a Wrecking Beast. I don't know if this is a deck that wants Wrecking Beast. Maybe it does. Don't want the locket, so it's either Growth Spiral or Wrecking Beast. I don't think decks need Growth Spiral, although I guess it plays pretty well with Dovin's Acuity. Sure. Alright, take... Ooh, Soraform Hybrid. Never mind, I was going to say take Quench, but... Hybrid? That light's really nice. Um, Again, I just don't feel like I need another Clear the Mind here, so I'll actually take Simic Locket. And Titanic Brawl is going to be pretty bad in our deck. Could just take a Beefcake here, but I think I'm just going to take another Growth Spiral. Alright, Sentinel's Mark could be really good in our deck. Guess we have, if we cut this Sphinx, we only have one white card, and we're actually like Simic. We're a little bit all over the place. Alright, Scuttle Gator to the rescue. Tower Defense, hello. There we go! <laughs> there it is! Look, it's in pack three when we decided to cut black. Alright. Black cards back in. <laughs> Black cards back in. Orzhov Guildgate in. We, can we just play four colors? Can we just play a Shark to Crab? Scuttle Gator out. All right. Well, that's the pick. There's a Trollbred Guardian here, which is another just beefcake, right? Whatever that means. Also, Windstorm Drake, which is, you know, not a beefcake. Um, God. The, yep. That's the pick. We'll, we'll figure out mana later on. Can we just start slamming a... Uh, Demir Guildgates? Can we get some Demir Guildgates? Is that asking too much? 
Look, I'm glad this showed up too. It's one of my least favorite cards. I'm probably going to take a Rester's Admonition. Oh man, we're going to be like <laughs> the five color amalgamation or something like that. All right, we, we know we're blue <laughs> and we're definitely white. We're going to be splashing black, right? So let's just hold the fort. Hello, here is an Archway Angel. We have five Guild Gates. Archway Angel does keep you alive. It does gain you a ton of life. I wouldn't mind this Gateway Plaza, but I actually do think I'd take the Archway Angel here. I don't really love Swirl and Torrent. And that's a nice way to just make sure we don't die. Um, I think this is a pretty easy Chillbringer. There's nothing else in the pack I'm considering. I do not like Sphinx of the Guild Pact here. <laughs> Clear the mind number 12. Essence Capture is a little awkward in a deck that looks like it's about to have some pretty bad mana. I don't think we're playing Sentinel's Mark in this deck. Uh, I guess, I mean, we could cut some Gross Spirals Hybrid, have Shark to Crab as our only green card with three green sources. This is asking a lot. Concordia Pegasus, is that what I have to take? I'm going to take Essence Capture because we're pretty much base blue. Open the gates, but we're splashing green, so that doesn't seem like a good idea. So I guess we will take a Swirl and Torrent here, although I'm not really looking to play it. All right, Azorius Guild Gate's a nice pickup. Lots of ill-gotten inheritance flowing. And again, Wayfinder would be fine, but it doesn't guarantee you fix your mana. And uh, green is not a primary color for us, so I'll just take Azorius Guild Gate. What, what could go wrong, right? What could actually go wrong here? Thought Collapse seems good. Um, we might get that Orzhov Guildgate back in, or lock it back in here. Yeah, it looks like, let's see, green out. Again, consider Shark to Crab still. Take out Simic Locket. Yeah, and we've still got plenty of playables. We're, our mana's just going to be bad. <laughs> uh, let's grab Azorius Locket here. Okay, Viscopa Vampire. There's sad to pass this hybrid, right? But playables are playables. Uh, just this year's portal with uh, Basilica Bellhaunt is kind of the bee's knees, but that's not where we're at here. Take a Sagittar's Volley. Sure, I'm never playing a Mammoth Spider in this deck. Take the Uncommon. <gasps> clear the Mine. And Grow Spiral number 5. Yeah, Clear the Mine's coming out. Watchful Giant's coming out. Alright. Alright, let's figure this out. <laughs> let's figure it out, because... All I ever want to do in my life is resolve this card, and I never get to play with it, so I'm going to force myself to play with it, whether Magic wants me to or not. Uh, you don't need too many instants for Dovin's Acuity to be, like, very good. We've got quite a few counters, actually. Quince, Essence Capture, Thought Collapse. We've got Decent High End. I think we can actually cut Blade Juggler, A, because we have... Oh, wait, we're on 39 cards? Maybe we can't cut Blade Juggler. <laughs> Maybe we cannot cut the Blade Juggler. Uh-oh. Wait, 8, 9, 10, or 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We actually need to add a card to our deck. Well, what have we done? What have we done? All right, let's see. It should probably not be a green card. It should probably be a blue or white card. Four Swamps. The Basilica Bell Hunt. And the Viscopa Vampire add into that. Thankfully, Consecrate is at least cyclable in blue-white. So we're going to be mainly blue-white. We're going to be splashing black and green. I don't think I actually want a forest in my deck. Because I don't have a way to fetch a land. Normally I want a basic in my deck when I have a way to fetch a land. So I can play that basic untapped and use whatever I'm casting that turn. So I think Shark to Crap's fine here, even though... We're going to get stuck. We're, we're so going 0-2. Um, I think Sentinel's Mark on like one of our flyers could just win this game, but we're very light on creatures. So the Sentinel's Mark looks a little bit uh, awkward. Like, how many creatures do we actually have? One Griffin? Do we have eight creatures in the deck? All right, Sentinel's Mark should not be in the deck then. It's very high impact when you cast it. Where did it go? There it went. Maybe Swirling Torrent, but that doesn't seem that great. Don't. I mean, my other options are like the six drops or a third locket, which doesn't seem good. Scuttle Gator. Uh oh. 
Uh oh, we waffled too much. All right, six drop. That leaves us with like four six drops in our deck. Oh god, <laughs> we might be in trouble against some really uh, aggressive decks here. We really want to resolve this though. So okay, <sighs> clear the mind just doesn't do anything. Soraform hybrid as a two drop, and it's double green to adapt, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't pick up any creatures to fill that gap. Ugh. I feel like maybe the Sentinel's Mark is right. Eyes everywhere. I would normally take that out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I just don't want another 6-drop in the deck. Maybe I don't need Prying Eyes here. And I can bring in Swirl and Torrent to be just a little bit more defensive and then just have the Sentinel's Mark as a potential, you know, way to just get back in a game that I'm completely losing. And let's look at mana real quick. So, uh, white source is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's okay, but we'll probably go up. Blue is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Black is 4, 5, 6. We definitely don't need that much. I think I'm actually going to go down Swamp, Swamp, and up. <laughs> Not Ethereal Absolution. Um, Island, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then we have the three green sources here. If we had been like base green, we could have taken more of the open the gates, and then this would be a little bit easier for us, because a single open the gates gives us all of our colors, but we're, <laughs> we're going to accept our losses to having a, you know, a double black, double white card in our deck with like three black sources, well, four black sources, but uh, hey, look. I came here to have fun. I got plenty of gems, not worried about losing this one. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the cards and, you know, record while doing it. So that's the deck. A little bit of a monstrosity, but we're going to try it out. <laughs> Look at this. Um, thanks for watching. Again, like, comment, and subscribe below. Wish me luck because we're going to need it. And, uh, yeah, see you in the matches. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to scry land to the top, and it's all going to be okay. Whiskey for the win. All right, go to the bottom, please. We're going to play land and pass the turn, and everything's going to be all right. We're just going to draw a couple lands, play our locket, play some ad addendum, and we'll be all right. Or, you know, we just won't draw a second land. There's no way you keep that open in hand. It's just so bad. See, look, er everything's coming up. I just need to draw one more, and the plan will stick. Or not. All right, you were doing good there for a second deck. You were doing good. That would actually be pretty nice to stick in eyes everywhere. My opponent can counter this if they want, but th this has some good advantage later on, and it makes people play a little bit poorly later on in the game. Uh, sure, I think we just keep our lands on top. My opponent seems to have a very reactive hand. I'll go ahead and cast... The locket instead of running, you know, Viscope of Vampire into like an Essence Capture or something like that. The opponent's got to have some number of counter spells. So, if in case you never <laughs> encountered this card, because people don't play it very often, it's not amazing. You pay six mana and exchange it with any non land permanent. Um, then, of course, your opponent gets control of the eyes everywhere. Ooh, we're playing against some sort of weird mirror match. Scry locket to the bottom. Although that was a black source, so maybe that was a bad idea, but ooh, Sphinx of New Prov off the top. Solid. I would rather have a Sphinx than a Locket. Cost two more to destroy this. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Opponent's got six mana and apparently all removal spells. Or I guess play a Mammoth Spider. But we have this Arrester's Admonition. We also have a Chillbringer. I'll just keep a land on top and play Chillbringer here. Chili B coming down. And get in for four. Nice. I like it. I like it. One more mana and we have this Eyes Everywhere active. So my opponent's got to be careful about like what big creature they slam on board. The, the thing is, of course, that once you activate this they have the eyes everywhere, so they can then swap it back or take something better, something different, but hopefully you take the best permanent on board when you activate it. And uh, sometimes your opponent just can't even play certain cards 
because you can just take it and win. I do not want this Blade Juggler. Scry's coming in handy here. Ooh, Gateway Plaza is nice. So I guess I'll just hold at Arrestor's Admonition. My opponent might have like some way to tap, or they might have like Stony Strength or something. I'm going to attack with both. No, they're playing something now. Wall Mage is binding. Okay, uh, sure. I might even Arrestor's Admonition my Sphinx back to my hand here. I'll just play Viscopa Vampire and Gateway Plaza. And we'll figure out how to deal with uh, this spider later on. Vampire doesn't really do much in the face of this Mammoth Spider, though. Sure, I'll run out the Vampire. Ooh, there's an actual pause now, so they could have Essence Capture. Guess not, though. We could also play an Ethereal Absolution if we find it, which would be, I guess, not insane insane. My opponent doesn't actually have any creatures in their graveyard, which, by the way, is the best way to try and beat that card, um, is try to keep creatures out of your graveyard. That way they can't activate and make spirit. So you got to win with something like uh, Ill-Gotten Inheritance, something that deals a marginal amount of damage. We've got a Senate Griffin coming down. Okay, okay. And we got to subscribe to the bottom. All right, looks like we're going to sit here and stare at each other for a little while, though. Wouldn't mind drawing some counter spells, but I've got my locket to kind of refill. I've got the scry going on as well. Swirling Torrent, that actually seems pretty good. One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's just cast that. If they counter it, they counter it. Doesn't usually matter which modes you pick on this, unless there's like a token on board. Ooh, actually, you know what? Nah, they would have to activate it. I was going to say, I can actually bounce back any creature they take with uh, eyes everywhere. But I can do that with the Rester's Admonition. Let's go for the Torrent, and they have Thought Collapse, they have it. Again, it doesn't matter which one we do. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, it still doesn't matter. They, they know what their top card is, but it'll just replace their top card, basically. And it looks like they have no counter spell. Probably have something to kill the Vampire here. And if not, then <laughs> they don't. Okay, my opponent's hand must be... Well, they didn't play a land, so my opponent must just have a bunch of expensive cards in hand. Ooh, kill Ch Chillbringer post damage, sure. Comes Mammoth Spider again, I assume. Impassioned Orator into Mammoth Spider, that makes sense. Alright, looks like Arrestor's Admonition going to be fine here. Simic Guildgate... To the bottom. Archway Angel gains us four life. Gets us another creature on board that can't really attack through this spider. Um, but I think it's probably the best play here. Just get some threats on board. The Archway Angel does block the Senate Griffin. And if we draw Rester's Admonition, we can just start jamming. Yep, here comes Griffin again. Gains him a little bit of life back, but we're way ahead on the life advantage. Our opponent's straight up Bant, looks like. Probably splashing for, you know, something like an Archway Angel. I still have this Arrestor's Admonition and this Slime Bind and this Azori Azorius Locket at the ready. I was going to say, I might even keep a land on top, but I think it's fine to scry lands to the bottom here. Thought Collapse, that's a decent draw. Yeah, two lands on the bottom now. Yeah, I think we just pass here. I guess I could go Arrestor's Admonition, your Spider. Attack for three, and then counter it on the way back down. Yeah, that seems fine. Do I need to use Arrestor's Admonition right now, though? Not really. Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and get this spider here. Attack with the angel, and then Thought Collapse anything that interacts with the angel, or just Thought Collapse the mammoth spider again. Ah, uh, that's even better, actually. I kind of like the idea of just sending this vampire in, too, because I don't think it's ever going to get better than it is right now. 
So just, you know, tell them to trade. Oh, they're going to go for some sort of pump. Ooh, this might be better. I think I can slime bind that, right? Assuming they don't have... Uh, I mean, Quench doesn't do it. And they're going to take the trade for the Orator. All right, this means I won't have a counter spell for... Oh, yes, I will. I'll have Essence Capture for the Mammoth Spider. Oh, yeah, that didn't die, though. Right. But it didn't kill my creature either. Also, we're at 30 life. Can't Thought Collapse, but we can take out Mammoth Spider. Biogenic Ooze? Oh my god. Yeah, let's Essence Capture that one. Opponent has a Biogenic Ooze. Not really great against eyes everywhere. They can just keep stealing it back. Let's go ahead and ditch to the bottom. Sure, we'll go ahead and play that. Attack with our 4-5 Angel. I'm assuming we'll get a chump out of them here. Maybe not yet. Another trick in hand, huh? Summary Judgment doesn't do it here. Or at least not on my turn it doesn't. I guess they have a slime bind of their own. Or I guess they could just take four. Okay. Well, we have Thought Collapse for anything that gets in the way of this Angel. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. That doesn't leave me mana to uh, lock it, but that's fine. Ooh, Absorb to the Graveyard. Good to know about that one. Knight of Sorrows. Wouldn't have been a good draw. Shimmer and Absorb would have been fine draws for the opponent. Scry. Uh, yeah, that can go to the bottom. We already have our black source. And two of our black cards are already on the bottom. I think we just draw right now. I guess we can attack first. Again, I'm, I'm expecting a chump here. Opponent keeps looking at their hand. No, go to three, huh? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and draw. I would like to get through this game without showing our opponent. Oh, <laughs> growth spiral, sure. There's the absolution. I was going to say, I, I, I want to get through this game without showing them that. We might be able to with the eyes everywhere. Depending on what they play here. They haven't shown us too many super powerful cards. They have the Biogenic Ooze. They have the, um, whatchamacallit. You know, the whatchamacallit. Uh, actually, no, we already have a land in hand. We need to figure that out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we can't play and activate this. Um... So I could just go for the win here. I could just take their Windstorm Drake and then attack for five. And then they have to deal with both of these even with the Scry. I'm just going to go for that. Their best play last turn was Growth Spiral. And if I can get through this game without showing my opponent Ethereal Absolution, I think that would be great. Let's see, Slime Vine does save them. I guess they have the block. Never mind. Warrant. Uh-oh. Opponent lives to fight another day, and they have the eyes everywhere now. With my Ethereal Absolution in my hand. Well, we're going to redraw the Angel. Ooh, good draw from the opponent there. Windstorm Drake still lethal, though. One, two. Discard and open the gates plus a Gateway Plaza. Surprise Warrant Warden. Wasn't playing around a rare there. Wasn't really playing around anything. Alright, we no longer get scries here. Alright, let's go ahead and just jam with Windstorm Drake. See if they just have to chump block here. All 
All right, now if I play Ethereal Absolution and I activate and they take it, one, two, three, four, five, six, they won't have enough mana. In fact, they don't even have a black mana, so they can't activate it, but they can swap and shrink my creatures, which would kill the spirit. Yeah, I'm just going to play Arcway Angel. And they might have to take that with eyes everywhere to survive here. And once I have eyes everywhere back, I might have a good shot at using Ethereal Absolution to win this game. Consecrate to Cycle. <laughs> That's pretty awkward. Um, consume would kill my Sphinx here, the, the lockdown creature. Scry to the bottom. Opponent has four cards in hand and lots of mana. So if they have nothing else, they've got to take Arcway Angel here with eyes everywhere. And they use six of their mana for the turn. Sure. Two cards left. Scry. Uh, that can go bottom. I'd rather just find removal or something like that. How close are we to getting back to those cards? Because we have a Consecrate Consume as the first one. All right, well, let's go ahead and stick Ethereal Absolution. My opponent's got, what, three or four dudes in the bin? One, two, yeah, they've got plenty. Yeah, let's go ahead and stick this. So we didn't quite get through this game without showing our opponent uh, our best cards, but it's fine. We got the eyes everywhere back. We've got the ethereal absolution on board. Opponent with three cards in hand. Watchful giant. The one one dies right away, so that's not very good. Six mana, two five, sure. Attack. Okay, maybe my opponent's trying to get me to use my mana as a block instead of an attack. I'm also at 34 life. Right, I forgot this can exile any card. It only makes a spirit if you exile a creature, so I can't just willy-nilly click. Oh, and we have a Windstorm Drake and a Basilica Bell Haunt. All right, so this is good. Dang. I, I wanted to see one more card from their hand there with the Bell Hunt. That was a very good game. We went for Lethal. Forgot we didn't even have Lethal. And then uh, kind of messed things up. Sagittar's Volley. I don't know. Our opponent's playing a lot of Stinkers, too. I can see just, like, Scuttle Gator sitting here and mopping up the floor. Clear the Mine could be fine as well. Prying Eyes. Most of the cards we drew were relevant. Opponent's got some interaction. We don't really have much sideboard as it is, so maybe we bring in, like, Clear the Mine here? All right. Well, I'm just going to run it back. See you in game two. All right, match two. <laughs> we have a quench and some six drops to keep. Uh, probably lead off with Orjov Guildgate into Island. That way we can quench a three drop. The Archway Angel is pretty good at making up for lost life early in the game. All right. And we can play a Vampire to trade off with that. I would like to just quench something here and then play the Vampire. Okay, let's go and start deploying some Guild Gates. Or I guess we could just play this Vampire out. But what if they play a Senate Griffin or something? I'm not worried about the two life right now. I'm just worried about my opponent resolving something that deals too much damage early on. There we go. Well, now we don't even have a quench, so there's no reason we shouldn't just play our Viscopa Vampire next turn. This Archway Angel is going to gain us a lot of life as well. So let's go ahead and play out a blocker. Guess if our opponent plays like a Mammoth Spider or something, that would be pretty nasty. A Locket, not so much. I will trade if my opponent attacks. Okay, lock it into gate, huh? Didn't even notice my opponent didn't have green mana. 
Biogenic Ooze is triple green, right? Or is it triple green to activate? I, I don't 100% remember. My opponent didn't attack, so I'm assuming they're going to take a block here. If they arrest her zeal, then that's fine by me. Why do I have a stop on my end step? All right, let's go just Gateway Plaza here. Next turn, we can play the Angel and gain six life if we want to. Or we could play Swirl and Torrent, but I like to get my value out of that card. Doesn't look like my opponent has anything super exciting to play here. Yeah, why do I have a stop here? Take, take that off. All right, Azorius Locket. Uh, we could just play Angel, right? I might have a Law, Mage, Law Mages Binding or something, but then I can get some value out of Swirl and Torrent. Put your creature back on top, put my Angel back in hand. It was just straight up resolves, so no counter spells. We didn't see any counter spells in that first game, and it was a pretty long game. I'm just drawing two cards, okay. I'm just gonna have six cards in hand. Wow, look how the auto tapper tapped for that. Did they have to tap that way? Yeah, they did. Never mind. Ah, my arch nemesis, the mammoth spider. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go Guildgate into lock it into sphinx and make sure we can still cast sphinx white white blue blue yeah all right sphinx of new prov new prohave we don't have our eyes everywhere this time so we're not getting like incremental virtual card advantage here the mammoth spider does hold back our guys pretty well Ooh, fight spell Maybe Thrive or something like that. I'd love to get my opponent to cast Warrant and then just bounce their token. Maybe they're considering like Law Mages Binding on our Angel and start attacking with this uh, Spider. Alright, just nothing. So that makes me content to just pass back for now with the Thought Collapse and the Azorius Locket. I could just Crack Lock it now to try and hit a Land Drop. Uh, blue, blue, white, white, and I can still keep up Thought Collapse this way. Wait, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. White, white, blue, blue. Just psych my opponent out a little bit more there. Let's go ahead and draw two. Yeah, I don't really want to miss land drops if I can avoid it. Ooh, consume. Well, I already went to combat. It's not an instant, right? No. We don't want to consecrate their creatures either. Not that we're casting consecrate anytime soon. Yeah, Gross Spiral's just fine. They didn't put a land down, so I'm assuming they're on all spells, which is okay as well. Yep, yep, yep. So next turn we can go consume with uh, Thought Collapse back up. Our, all our opponent has going for them is this spider, but it is holding my guys off. Let's go ahead and consume. One, two, one, two, black mana, blue mana. Target you. I guess one thing that could happen here is my opponent could flash in a creature, but it'd have to be more than three power for it to keep their spider around. Ooh, what did they flash in like a fairy and shrunk their own spider? Although I think Fairy can only shrink your opponent's creatures, so that wouldn't work. Alright. Opponent's got to be on, like, Summary Judgment, which doesn't actually kill either of my creatures. At least not on my turn, because the Sphinx has Vigilance. Summary Judgment only hits tapped creatures. Alright, what's your interaction? They're looking at my Graveyard? Okay... They're eating my Consecrate Consume, sure. I feel like it'd be so much better to... Oh, they don't have black mana in their deck. I didn't even realize that when they cast it last game. They, I guess they have Gateway Plaza, which they discarded last game. So they're just using that to cycle. I mean, opponent with a million cards here, and I've got a lot of interaction. Here comes the Ooze. Say no thank you. Double double green, triple green to activate. Alright, ooze down. 
mill a sphinx's insight. And we're going to jam for 7 again. I guess I could have swirl and torrented the ooze and then just had counter for the next backup or the next one. I just don't really feel like my opponent has counter magic in any capacity. I mean, clearly they don't, otherwise they would have saved their biogenic ooze there. Maybe a bounce spell? Oh, well, I may just bind in post-combat, sure. Alright, so now if my opponent plays a creature, I will just uh, swirl and torrent the angel back to my hand and put their creature back on top. So time lock the opponent and get my angel back. They got to deal with the sphinx now as well. Plenty of cards in their hand. Not bad cards altogether. They've got a couple stinkers, like uh, the Watchful Giant. Mass Manipulation on my Sphinx. Just targeting the Sphinx. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. I can cast this. Oh, I'm going to get both my guys back. It is going to take a little while to redeploy them, but I'm going to get my guys back here. Oh, that might be just better, actually. So I can pay 5 mana to bounce this and then replay the Sphinx. Yeah, let's do that instead. 1, 2, 3, 4, and i got to make sure I keep up the right mana. White, white. What am I doing? Okay, white, white, blue, blue, whatever. It, it doesn't matter how I do this early. I'm not casting anything else. All right, let's go Admonition. Yeah, I'll only have one mana up anyway. Five mana, bounce that back to my hand. <laughs> Essence Capture. I'm one mana short of being able to hold that up. Sphinx of New Prov. Arrestor's Admonition was a great draw there because the plan was to just swirl and torrent my two creatures, which I'm pretty sure I can do. Yeah. All right, here comes the Prion Eyes. Sorcery Speed Prion Eyes. Opponent with a million cards, 11 cards left in deck. Whiskey for the win, down to 11 cards. Pretty light on removal overall, though. And Sphinx is now again a problem for them. Hazda Officer is not going to do it. They're going down to 2 this turn. I have an Essence Capture, a Swirl and Torrent for any number of Flying Blockers. Maybe they 28 ball me with this Hazda Officer. All right, what do you have? You gotta, at the very least, threaten to kill this. My opponent would have one more turn here if they didn't, or if they hadn't missed the timing on the, whatchamacallit, on the uh, Law Mages Binding. They took an extra three damage this game. All right, Swirl and Torrent's a good answer to this. Essence Capture does not counter that Sarah Angel. Nope. I don't think I'll block here. Alright. And we're going to swirl and torrent our opponent out of this game. Also putting the officer on top. This is where it's relevant. Put a creature on top. Bounce the token. Sphinx. They need a something that costs two or less mana to even interact with this and yeah we get to take it with 25 life felt pretty good maybe playing against some good rares and a collection of kind of filler cards very similar to what our deck's looking like but uh, i'd like to see how we perform again <gasps> sleek schooner all right enough of that uh we win match one i'll see you guys in match two coming up all right how do y'all feel about Four gates and a Sphinx of New Prov, because I feel like keeping it against Synchro. Good old Yu-Gi-Oh friend here. Uh, lead off with Azorius Guildgate. And a pass. All right, Synchro. Show me show me blue. Don't show me red and black. All right, there we go. That gives us time to cast our Sphinx. Let's go and get down our Gateway Plaza. Arrestor's Admonition is actually a reasonable draw here. In case they cast something, it gives me something to do on turn three. No, they're just going to be a complete copycat. I guess their Azorius Guildgate has different art, but still a little bit, little bit rude. All right, um, let's go, I guess, Orzhov Guildgate here? Or maybe if we draw, like, 
Oh, we have Gateway Pause. It doesn't actually matter, so it kind of does. Let's get a blue source down because of the Essence Capture here. We'll Essence Capture any creature they have, basically. Not that one. That always makes me think my opponent's playing a High Alert deck. All right, is opponent trying to bait me there? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and play our Sphinx. We have blue, blue, white, white, Sphinx, Sphinx for the memories against your Resolute Watchdog. Not very many spells that can actually target this Sphinx right now. And we've got Essence Capture. This is only my opponents, right? Yeah. So I can Essence Capture without paying extra mana. All right, good time for my opponent to just resolve something interactive. Even a Senate Griffin stops me from interacting very much. Opponent is definitely slow ball in the turn, though. I guess if they have a Slime Bind, they could just go for it here. Oh, final payment. Sure, that's actually pretty strong. All right, we'll play a Locket and hold up... Um... Essence Capture, yeah, just Essence Capture. We don't have much else going on. They killed our, they killed our one threat. I guess I could have tapped differently there and played a Guild Gate. High alert, huh? With your little doggy friend. Sure. So we're gonna be taking three for a little while here. Just need to draw any of our creatures. Not too threatened by this right now, but it, it could get out of hand. Sure, that was actually a pretty good one. Still going to be tapped out here, though, but we have an Arrestor's Admonition. This gains us 8 life. So hopefully the opponent can't just straight up kill this angel and we get to untap with some of our spells. Let's see what what's coming down. The junk troller? Tell me it's the junk troller. Not a not nothing like a chillbringer. Nothing that interacts. Just play some goofy defenders. I love me a high alert though. It's one of the scariest cards for me to play against. There are curves of like this into the zero four wall that <laughs> just kill you. I'm not gonna play into some sort of combat trick here, even though I don't think my opponent has it. Alright, 10th District Veteran is not the scariest thing in the world. Question is, am I attacking? Drawing that Vampire, I'm definitely attacking. Um, yeah, I'll just trade the Vampire for anything that attacks into me. Or trade it for the Dog, I guess. So, if I tap like this... Black, blue, one... I. Want to keep up mana for the locket if I can. So let's go black, blue, blue. And then this keeps up white, 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 black, or white, 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 white if I can. While also keeping up either of these spells, but not both. All right, you're up, opponent. I will throw vampire in the way of virtually anything here. I guess if they have a kill spell for my angel, ooh, Hallowed Fountain, I'm going to probably admonition it back to my hand. And what am I blocking here, the veteran or the watchdog? Probably block the watchdog, right? Actually, just block the veteran, make him use a mana to save it if that's what they want to do. Since this has ups... Oh, actually, no, let's, let's get this dog out of here. They could sack it to make their veteran bigger. All right, they're just going to save their dog. Fine by me. My life total is going to stay the same. I've got a four-turn clock on him here. If they cast a creature, it'll actually be a three-turn clock. Gateway sneak. Yeah, let's go ahead and capture that bad boy and make this a three-turn clock. And opponent down to one card in hand here. Oh, 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 oh. We just play that. It's gotta be right to just play that, right? Yeah. We we didn't look, 
I get to draft it one time in my final draft of the set. I'm playing it, and it's insane. It doesn't change my clock at all, but it shortens my opponent's clock, and uh, if I untap with it, my opponent just basically can't win. I mean, I only have one spirit in the bin, but... A little awkward. <laughs> doesn't change the high alert math very much, but let's, let's see what the opponent can muster up. Also worth noting, I guess they've got a bunch of black cards in their deck because they have a lot of mana fixing. Another mass manipulation? Wow, opponents are just manipulating the masses. Daytime TV all over again. A little awkward. I'm going to have to admonition my angel back to my hand here, but I can make a spirit, so it's not too big of a deal. Swirl and Torrent. Is that better? One, two, three, four, five. No, let's just admonition and make an angel. Give me my angel, please. Actually, if I draw a land off this admonition, an untapped source, I can just recast the angel. It won't have the counter on it, but... <laughs> Gain eight more life. Go to 26. Woo! Sick nasty. Sure, my opponent gave me the GG. I'll give him the GG back. All right. The draws have been working out. I like it. I like it. Against a high alert deck. All right, I have no virtual sideboard, so shaboom, we're back in it. See you in match, or rather, game number two. All right. Um, well, here's the awkwardness of the Sentinels, Mark. Also, yeah, I guess Slimebind's pretty horrendous against their deck. It's bad against high alert. <laughs> Consume's also pretty bad against high alert. Um, but I still think I just keep this and we roll with the punches. Opponent did surprisingly little Synchro Summon in last game for a person named Synchro. Sphinx is a good draw. We have almost set up to uh, cast that. Eh, I guess that was also a reasonable draw. If my opponent puts a card in the graveyard, do I just Consecrate here? Probably just Arrestor's Admonition any dorky 3-drop my opponent plays. Like a 10th District Veteran. No, just play that and pass. Something castable in their hand, though. Alright, well, we're going to be able to Sphinx on turn 3, but we can't really do anything here. So I guess we're just shipping back. Ah, the Fairy Duelist. Sure. Does get pumped by Harler. Also, probably one of the, like, defining commons in this set as far as, like, what's playable and what's not. Not playable necessarily, but it, it does make a, a lot of your decisions difficult when it comes to uh, attacking into two mana. Alright, Senate Courier. None of this is scary unless my opponent gets high alert, and I'm going to play my Sphinx of Nuprov. Now, it is pretty scary if they do draw high alert here, because that's what, 9 power? Vampire is late to the party here. Let's go and play Sphinx and pass. Sphinx can actually stop Fairy Duelist from coming in if they do have high alert. <laughs> Tap your Gateway Plaza for Gateway Plaza? That's that's not that's not the best use of that card. All right, nice. I think I can pretty freely attack here. Um, if my opponent has a Rester Zeal, I have Slime Bind to counteract it. Yeah, this makes sense if they have a Rester Zeal. Ooh. Sure, let's actually put the Fairy Duelist first, because if they Rester Zeal the Senate Courier, um, then the duel Duelist still dies. Oh, Sentinel's Mark. Okay, so I kind of want to, yeah, just slime bind that. Can't play anything else this turn. Is there something better to do? I have a Rester's Admonition. I don't really like that here. I, I could also just Sentinel's Mark my thing. I give up the lifelink, but I don't think that's going to matter much. Yeah, I'll just hit back with the Sentinel's Mark. That lets me keep the Slime Bind in hand for like a later Arrestor Zeal. Um, I still get to kill the Fairy Duelist here because I ordered it first. Let's see, if they also have a Rester's Admonition, I have 5 Toughness, they're going to have 1, 2, 3. They could, yeah, I mean, they could 
have an arrestor zeal here still. I still have the slime bind though. Oh, they, but they're gonna sack. Oh, I thought they were gonna sack the watchdog to keep their uh, which call it around. They're gonna save their fairy duelist. Oh no! Did they think I ordered the? This doesn't make any sense. Why? I guess because it blocks. Sure. Okay. Well, nothing dies here except I guess I got this out of their hand and we kind of half traded our sentinels marks. But I have a um, arrestor's admonition in my hand, so I'm not too worried about any of this. Sweet little exchange of cards there. Final payment. Sure, okay. Just kill my guys, fine. Not going to fight over it. Just going to play probably Senate Griffin. Opponent's not even really dealing that much damage. I don't want to slime bind something and have them play high alert and my slime bind doesn't do anything. Or maybe that's a reason I should be playing it. Alright, let's just go... I could go Vampire plus Bounce this. The vampire doesn't attack into it though, neither does Senate Griffin. Guess I would like to find my black mana. Alright, I'm just gonna play Senate Griffin here and pass. I'll we'll probably end up taking two more from the courier. Alright, that's actually pretty strong. My opponent's creatures are a little bit on the weaker side. And we will ship the turn. I think I can hold off on consume. The good thing about consume here is my opponent's not playing afterlife creatures, or at least they don't have that many. So even if it doesn't gain me a lot of life or take out a huge creature, it does just remove one of their creatures off the board. Sure, you can you can get me here. Oh, can I... Is this thing coming in too? No, for a second I thought Fairy Duelist was attacking. I would probably just take that block. Again, I have Slime Bind. All right, I'm going to go for the Swirl and Torrent. Oh, actually, you know what? They can... Oh, wait, never mind. I just put Fairy Duelist back on top of their library instead. Uh, so put the Duelist on top and the Courier in hand. That way they can't just flash the Duelist back in in combat here. This lets me get a pretty clean attack in. They get to replay their threats, but the Courier is going to be a 1-4 again. And I get a nice little clean attack for three. If they summary judgment my griffin or whatever, that's fine. Ooh, looks like they have it. Nice. Alright, they're going to redraw their fairy. So I assume it's going to be Senate Courier or hold on to fairy. Then they'll have that one unknown card in hand. So I guess we need to draw, like, chill <laughs> this card. Not bad. I'll just play it out here. One four are surprisingly effective against my deck, apparently. I don't think they flash their fairy duelist in here since it can't attack for damage. They're just gonna leave it in their hand. Need to draw like black source ethereal absolution here. That's neither. Uh, if I attack, they just play their duelist. And then they have a good attack back on me, so I will go ahead and just play my Vampire and pass the turn. Probably at the point where I just want to cycle Consecrate, actually. Alright, we're going to see a Duelist here. Probably not still. Nope. Opponent wants to keep it up as a combat trick. Wall of Lost Thoughts. Sure. See if that hits any of the cards we really want to draw. There goes Basilica Bond, Dovin's Acuity, and the Arc the Angel. Ugh, all three of those, well, I guess Basilica Bellhaunt would not have been a good draw. Plus a swamp. All four of those were pretty relevant draws. I could see this coming down to milling. Let's go ahead and consecrate one of our own creatures. 
or one of our own cards, just like a swamp or something. We want to keep. Actually, never mind. We can hit a, an opponent's spell here. Uh, yeah, let's get final payment out of their graveyard. We're trying to hit absolution plus swamp plus black source, something along those lines. Okay. All right, that's the black source. And uh, nothing else we can do here, though. Buckle up, guys. It's going to be a long one. Okay. All right, what you got for seven mana here? Nothing. All right. Draw. Sure. Thought Collapse. I think I'm supposed to hold on to that here. Like, I could go Admonition your Courier. Um, and then Thought Collapse it on the way back, but I'd rather hold on to Thought Collapse to either protect my Absolution when I draw it, or to hit a high alert if they draw it, or something really strong from them. Sphinx of New Prov. That's something really strong from them. I can just slime bind that though. And slime bind's not gonna have too many better targets. Alright, let's just go ahead and slap a bind on there. Semi guild gate, that makes shark to crab a live draw. I mean, even something like Eyes Everywhere would be a decent draw. We've gone through a lot of our deck. Kind of wish I had to clear the mind just to kind of cycle all of our good cards back into our deck. Most of our draws would be pretty good. Even Sentinel's Mark would let us just get in there with Chillbringer. Expose the Daylight on that. Sure. Inscribe to the top. All right, so Sphinx can start getting in there. If I block, they will flash in the Fairy Duelist. I could Thought Collapse the Fairy Duelist. They scry to the top as well, so milling that card might not be too bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for this. All right, let's go ahead and hit that. All right, they could also have a pump spell here. Slimebind Chillbringer, sure. Um, I could Arrestor's Admonitionist back to their hand, but I think I'm just going to let all this happen. Go digging for Absolution here with the Arrestor's Admonition. They kept Eyes Everywhere on top, Mill Junk Troller, and a Noxious Grudion. All right, so Chillbringer bites the bullet. The Fairy did still get countered. All right, Locket. Uh, Locket's not great, but it, it's fine. Uh, so I think one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't. Yeah, I can't play Absolution even if I do draw it here. That's not good. This Viscopa Vampire is pretty bad in this matchup. Probably just bring in some Clear the Minds. Keep in mind, my opponent also has Mass Manipulation in their deck, which could be one of the cards in their hand. Assume we're just going to see a Sphinx again. I'm actually running low on cards as well. Smart to give that Vigilance and get the one point in. That way I can't just free roll my Vampire into their two creatures. Alright, so let's draw... Alright, hit something. Shark to Crab Quench. Okay, those are respectable draws, I suppose. This is not abilities, right? Spells that target it. Quench is pretty bad here. Alright, let's go to our opponent's turn and then we'll we'll go ahead and shark to crab. Um, I guess on I want to do it on 
their upkeep, but too late, I suppose. Too late, I suppose. All right, let's go ahead and adapt the shark to crabs, see if they bounce in response or something like that. Tap the, the sphinxy. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting here is Quench could get a mass manipulation. I think they would have mass manipulated before combat there. Maybe not. Ooh, good draw. All right, let's get in there with Shark to Crab. Oh, I should have played Absolution pre-combat, then I could have attacked with the Vampire. That was bad. Yeah, I, I should have definitely played this pre-combat. All right, no Counterspell, please. One time, no Counterspell. Opponent just GG's us. <laughs> Yes! Yes! The card doesn't even have to resolve. Tetsamok for the win. Ooh, that was a fantastic game. Very swingy back and forth. I love it. Um, that puts us at 2-0. Very long game, so we're going to cut it short and just get to the next match. See you there. All right, um, this is a very sketchy hand. I'm on the play. I think I mull this. Uh... Just because I'm not very likely to be able to spectacle this. I have a super dead card and a probably dead card and almost dead. So I do think I'm mulling just... Oh, okay. Well, we'll draw, I guess, the same hand with less... Yeah, I guess an Eyes Everywhere could get us there. I'll actually keep Quench on top as well to just try to interact here. Gonna need the Eyes Everywhere into a bunch of lands and draw spells, but man, is this a disadvantage starting off. Quench... Anything here since I'm going to play eyes everywhere. All right. Well, there will be eyes everywhere. All right. Opponent's going to get to resolve their three drop here. Maybe I hit a blue source. Oh, nice. They didn't have one. Bell haunt to the bottom. Ooh, double black. Why is that card in our deck again? All right. Ship it back and hold up quench here. It would be awesome if we get to go quench your four drop and play a sphinx. Yes, please. Get that out of here. Uh, I want to be a little bit greedy to try and hit action. Or different colored mana sources. Alright. Arrestor's Admonition is quite good. I guess, I don't know, with the activation up on this. Again, same issue... Yeah, scry that to the bottom. Alright, that's actually fine. We just run out of Naked Chillbringer here into mana. I don't think we do. Opponent didn't play anything. They've clearly got something maybe a little bit reactive. I'd rather they just play a creature and I try to Chillbringer their creature. Pretty deliberate tapping as well. Tapping <laughs> the Godless Shrine before tapping the Island. So, what does that tell me? Thought Collapse, probably. That can go bottom. Sentinel's Mark. Do we need to cast that here? Uh, I don't think I do cast that here. I think I keep jamming for four while my opponent's content not doing anything. So, definitely going to play around Thought Collapse if I can afford to. Alright, Syndicate Messenger doesn't do too much here. Could even just Arrestor's Admonition it. Archway Angel. Uh, I think I'd keep that on top. I'm looking for, you know, enchantments that do stuff. Scope of Vampire, pretty bad. Do you think I'm just going to attack here? And play Viscope of Vampire? So they thought, they're not going to Thought Collapse a Vampire, but they would probably Essence Capture if they had it. 
because it makes their syndicate messenger bigger. Okay, I'm fine with a thought collapse. Let's see what we mill. Essence capture and a senate griffin? Sure. Ah, what is it? Chillbringer? Chilly bee? Alright, probably going to be able to resolve our Chillbringer in response, though. Not in response, you know what I mean. And they're not going to have a counter up this time. Sure. We'll go ahead and take our two, I suppose. Alright, Scry. Still going to ship all these lands to the bottom. At some point, we'll just hit land, land. Like that. Unfortunately, we can't play that land this turn. But let's go ahead and Chillbringer their Chillbringer. And we'll just send the turn back to them. Shimmer. Okay, I like when my opponents cast Shimmer as the first thing during their turn. It does help them find an answer, though, if they're struggling to find an answer. <laughs> okay, more Chillbringers are answers. Might be able to get my opponent here with a Sentinel's Mark, though. Into Screaming Shield. Wonderful. Alright, I will leave that on top, actually, because... Oh, never mind, that doesn't make any sense. So, I'm going to attack with Chillbringer. Actually, I'm thinking I go, like, Arrestor's Admonition, this guy. And then, uh, when they block Chillbringer, use Sentinel's Mark to save it. So, I'll have two threats. I'll have nothing, but I'll get to the point where maybe I can eyes everywhere their Chillbringer. Bounce that. I don't. It's probably a little bit better to bounce the Chillbringer, but I don't really want to um, bounce a Chillbringer, you know? Alright, they're going to go for the block. We're going to go ahead and Sentinel's Mark. And play Orzhov Guildgate. This taxes their white mana a little bit more, too, but. All right, Scream and Shield into Pass. Interesting. Slime Bind, fine actually, because it lets me attack into them. So I attack with both Slime Bind and um. I guess I mean they probably have interaction if they kept it up. This is, what, two mana to activate? So yeah, they have something in hand. Alright, let's go ahead and attempt to slime bind. Something tells me this isn't actually going to work here. All that does is let me just attack through what they're doing. Alright, we'll go ahead and play the land. And pass. Prying eyes. Alright, that's actually really good for them. They're going to be able to find some sort of answer here. Summary judgment and a land to the graveyard. Okay, here comes the messenger we knew about. <laughs> Double messenger. Thought collapse. I kind of like that. I can... Eyes everywhere. Actually, if I attack with both, they have to block both. So they just chump chump. They make two spirits, but I get to keep up my thought collapse now. Not too worried about the scream and shield right now. Oh, damn. right. Shoot. I messed up. <laughs> I don't know why I thought this Chillbringer couldn't attack. Okay, that might have just cost me the game, actually. Yeah, that was that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, I might lose to Scream and Shield now. So the right play there might have been to just take Chillbringer. Alright, well we get the thought collapse back here, I suppose. Well it definitely didn't play this game too well, but I do think I'm gonna lose to this stupid Chillbringer now. S Slimebind doesn't quite do it for me here. Shark to Crab. I can cast that. Let's see, if I attack now, they just block with Chillbringer. So I'm going to play Shark to Crab and pass. 
they're going to mill me for three, and then they can mill me for, it costs, what, five mana to basically activate and mill? i got to kill them in the next couple turns. There goes Absolution. Opponent also with just four cards in hand. Mortify Crab. Yeah, God, I cost myself the game there. Senate Courier, sure. With my absolution gone, I'm not I'm not feeling too too good about this. Uh one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think there's any way for me to take their creature and start milling them back. Two, three, four. I could take their Chillbringer and then attack with my Chillbringer. They have to block. That eats at least one of their creatures. Sure. I don't have too many other options here. And they're going to mill me in response. Okay. They got so many blockers, though. Note that uh, I took their Chillbringer, but I don't actually control their Screaming Shield. They control it, so they can still re-equip Screaming Shield to other creatures here. Maybe Swirling Torrent can do something here. They can also just take a thing back with eyes everywhere. Definitely bringing in Queer the Mines here, especially against Screaming Shield. All right, re-equip. Fine by me. Oh, we did draw Swirl and Torrent. Okay, that actually does something. Okay, and they have the token, so it's relevant. So let's put the Courier on top and bounce a token. That way their draw next turn is Senate Courier. If they have interaction for the Swirl and Torrent... Ugh. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next game. Oh, I wanted to concede in response. Why did it just... Res Ugh, I hate that. I didn't want to show them the cards that were getting milled there. Okay, let's bring in Clear the Mind. Both Clear the Minds. Um, don't really think I want to scuttle butt here. Prying Eye seems good as well. What seems bad? The the Vampire. Where are you? Viscopa Vampire can come out. I like the I like most of the draw and just card advantage. Sentinel's Mark seems a little on the weak side. I threw that game for sure. It, it, that was not good play. Not good play. Yeah, I don't love the Sentinel's Mark here. Uh, maybe I don't need the Prying Eyes. I haven't drawn Dovin's Acuity at all. It's kind of interesting. I mean, do we really want four six drops in the deck? I don't really need Prying Eyes with two Queer the Mines coming in. But it looks like my opponent's on mill. And we, we can beat that. See you in game two. All right, <laughs> should just take a screenshot of this hand. This is ridiculous. Um, actually, part of me wanted to be on the draw there. I just instinctively clicked on the play. Um, keep this clear the mind in my hand for a while, unless I really need to cycle it. But I've got some plays here. Get all these guild gates down now. Not playing a blade juggler on turn three, but we can pop it out on turn five, maybe. Oh, double clear the mine, huh? All right, uh, let's actually just play the locket here. Come on, get get out there. All right, lock it down, lock it down, and I uh, will play. Let's just cast a blade juggler. I don't care if my opponent counters this or not. Opponent's gonna snap off the thought collapse. Sure, get these thought collapses out of hand while we can with the clear the mines. We can consume the first target that comes down. All right, go ahead and snap off a griffin. Sure. <laughs> sure thing, opponent. Sure. There goes Dovin's Acuity. And we're probably just going to cycle Acquire the Mine next turn. Unless they play a Chillbringer or something. Ooh, Absolution. I don't really want to get that one countered. Uh, yeah, I do want to try and hit my land drop, though, so I'll cast Acquire the Mine. Target myself. Draw Sphinx of Nuprov. Sure, we'll just pass back. 
Guess I could have also just cracked lock it there. I'm not going to cast Ethereal Absolution into nothing. Uh, Dovin's Acuity is great. Let me see if that resolves. Sure, Prying Eyes in response. Okay. Double land to the graveyard? So good. All right, we can play Sphinx here, right? Blue, blue, white, white. Nice. Sphinx it up. Clear the mind, unfortunately. An instant. Ooh, Sphinx? That's perfect. We have a consume in hand. I will consume your Sphinx, if you know what I mean. Uh, one, two, three, four. I can't keep up the locket. Yeah, I would like to consume your Sphinx. I would like to eat this thing. Could just cast another Clear the Mine here, but I, I, I think I can wait on that. Wait till my opponent mills me a little bit more with their infinite thought collapses. Alright, Syndicate Messenger's coming down here into Senate Courier. Well, let's go and resolve Absolution and just destroy our opponent. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can't activate it, but we will Absolution them and jam. This turns off Afterlife as well. Our opponent had a Mortify in their deck, right? Or was that the last round opponent? Oh, the scoop! God, it's so good. All right, let's go to the next game. Next game. Ooh, Sagittar's Volley. I didn't even think about that. That should probably be in the deck, right? Just shoots down their flyers. It's probably better than some other janky card we brought in. It is green, though. It is green. Maybe better than, like, Blade Juggler. Bring in another green source. Uh, I'm not going to bring in another green source. I'm going to be greedy AF. See you in game three. All right, there's the trump card. We've got the consume. We've got something to kind of bait counter spells with the griffin. Um, got, you know, good mana development early on. So I, I like this hand, unless my opponent boarded into hyper aggro or something like that. Seems unlikely. Yeah, I guess that also <laughs> stops Senate Griffin. Ooh, I like eyes everywhere. That's good advantage throughout the course of this game. I'm just slamming this Griffin into whatever counter spells I can next turn. Opponent without their fourth land. This is not a match where we want to draw lands. I don't want slime bind here. This is not a game with slime binds going to be that good. All right, counter me, bro. Oh, Essence Capture Me, I guess. Okay. Oh, I don't like the idea of consuming a Senate Courier, but I will if that's what happens. All right, I will keep that on top. Just keep making my opponent have counter spells here. We will cons consume you. See if this eats a Thought Collapse, or if we eat a Senate Courier. This puts my opponent on no pressure. We can actually play Ethereal Absolution if they tap out. Yeah, we're just going to stick Absolution here. Uh, I'll keep Sphinx on top. Might even get a concession if my opponent doesn't have a way to deal with the Absolution right away. Because it is that good of a card. They already have a target in their graveyard. And at this point, I don't even really have to cast any more spells unless they're going to be very good. I will keep Shark to Crab on top. And I will just keep up the activation on Ethereal Absolution here. Alright, lock it coming down. All right, let's go ahead and eat that Senate Courier. God, it makes two twos? Ridiculous. I will keep an untapped source on top here. Not a slime bind though. Ooh, thought collapse was a fantastic draw. So my opponent doesn't have um 
any creatures in the graveyard. They're not going to block here, so I don't see the reason to keep up four mana for this. Summary Judgment, my spirit. Okay, I like that my opponent feels they have to do this. They might have to. I'm not poking fun at them. Uh, I want to keep up Thought Collapse here. So can I go blue, green? Oh, I can't cast a spell and keep up Thought Collapse, can I? No, so let's just cast the most expensive spell in my hand. Come on, come on. One, two, three. Wait, yes I can. Oh no, no I can't. Because this is my green source. And my third blue source. So I can't cast either of these and keep up Thought Collapse. So I might as well just play out the most expensive card I have here. Wow, the, the Sphinx coming down as a 4-4 is kind of insulting. Uh, I'm going to keep that on top, although it doesn't target this, right? Hexproof from Monocolor? But... Sure, I'll keep it on top. I'll just cast it on their Syndicate Messenger. Again, trying to hit land drop here. Essence Capture, not really amazing. I'm going to run out Shark to Crab and attack for 4. I, I, I need to just print screen this. This is ridiculous. Chili B, pretty good. Gonna keep Shark to Crab down. <laughs> shark to Crab? Shark to Crab down. There we go. Alright, yeah, opponent, <laughs> opponents had it. The, we were just dominating that game. The Ethereal Absolution so broken. It's ridiculous. Oh, feels good. We're 3-0. Against a bunch of control decks. We have not played and lost to aggro decks yet. Ooh, Sadistic Sky Marcher. Good playable limited card. Uh, let's see if we can just sweep 5-0. That would be amazing for our final draft here. If you're still with me, subscribe below. It's good stuff. Maybe. Sometimes. 50% of my drafts are pretty good. So, <laughs> anyway, we're moving on into match four. Thanks for watching. See you there. All right. Um, I'm going to play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Simic Gilgate Swamp Azorius deck. All we need is a third land to cast this locket, and I think we're good. Obviously, if I could just draw planes, that would be awesome. There's third land. So we can quench something and then cast a locket. Oh, yes, I will quench a hybrid. All right, so again, Simic this time. A little bit of a, little bit of a break. All right, mana problems dealt with. We can turn five this absolution here. Geyer Engineer. Okay, that's one of those cards I said not normally very good, but uh, uh, do we Dovin's Acuity or do we hold up Thought Collapse? I think we just go for the Acuity. And I, I should have done that before playing my land in case I drew Gateway Plaza. I would rather play that than the Orzhov, whatchamacallit. But <laughs> we're going to Ethereal Absolution on turn five. Kill our opponents. Get what? Oh, I thought that was Orzhov Guildgate. Oh yeah, we're just going to kill this Geyer Engineer for free. And then my opponent's going to have two creatures in the graveyard already. Ba-boom! This feels good. Is this what power feels like? Is this what... Is this what the magic gods feel like? All right, Sphinx's Insight. They might have like some sort of answer for this, and they could be digging for it. Simic is one of the decks that can actually beat Ethereal Absolution, you know, fair and square by um, just playing bigger creatures. I am going to keep up Thought Collapse and an activation of Absolution here. So Thought Collapse, any big, beefy, chonky creature my opponent plays. If they attack with Griffin, you just block. That puts another creature in the graveyard. It's almost like you didn't do anything. Yeah, let's just uh, counter Rampage and Renhorn. Probably don't even care enough about that to counter it, but I'm going to. Ooh, bricks. My opponent knows I can do this, so I'm just going to do it now. See if they want to trade their Griffin for a spurt. Yeah, it's Slimebind. Maybe I didn't care about that. Just keep... Uh, which I'm gonna call it for something that actually kills us. So here I can play Sphinx. 
but can't keep up the absolution. And that seems fine by me. I do get to keep up slime bind though. Opponent went Geyer Engineer into a 4 drop, which is a little bit disappointing. They must have drawn that uh, Rampage and Renhorn afterwards. Sure, Aeromunculus, good old 1 2. Becomes a 2 3, becomes itself when you adapt. Demoralizing card. I, I wish this was a mythic rare. I mean, not for my. That just dies! No, opponent! No! <laughs> What have you done to yourself? Oh, sorry. Ugh. I almost feel bad. Not like that bad. Didn't even know I had two arrestors admonitions. No wonder I've been top decking. Oh god, this is filthy gross. Trading just uh, it's so ineffective. I know my opponent kinda has to. To, I mean, they don't have to there. They're still at a decent life total, but every time you trade a creature, your opponent gets to just make another spirit. Look, right sitting in their graveyard, I have, what, four more spirit tokens? Like, even a Reckon Beast wouldn't really do very much. Go ahead and eat a hybrid. Opponent's got a solid little Semic deck here. I think my deck's pretty good against Simic. Like, look at all of the cards in my hand. They just deal with big creatures. I guess they're a little bit dirtily. Ooh, opponent responding by killing my Sphinx. Maybe they have a Law Mages Binding or something. Clear the Mind, also a pretty effective card against Ethereal Absolution, just to clear your own graveyard. Uh, this kind of holds off the 2-3 Flyers. Or the tutus. Slime bind the Sphinx. Sure. I'll probably just end up like Arrestor's Admonition, your Aeromunculus. Attack for three. Could also Arrestor's Admonition the Sphinx. Yeah, opponent's just gonna do that now. They used up all their mana. Opponent. No. Don't don't wait for me to attack. I haven't even drawn. That was in my draw step. Alright. Uh sure. <laughs> I like how Iromanculus just adapted back to its normal power and toughness. We get Dovin's Acuity back. Just playing with our food at this point. Feels good. There is a point where it starts to feel like you're maybe doing a little bit too much, just like being show-offy, but that's what my cards do Like when we get this going. Play Dovin's Acuity. Swirling Torrent. Ugh. Every card in our deck has been effective at some point. Even Eyes Everywhere, which is a card I never really play, but it's good, yeah. I mean, opponent just running back the same deal here. Uh, I'm going to play... 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just going to make two spirits on their end step here. And then I can Swirl and Torrent and attack for 7. Just attack out. I don't really want to show him too many more cards in our hand. Sure. 2-2 two, two Chillbringer, not too threatening. They can just never attack me either. It's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Alright, let's just make sure this doesn't tap both black at once. Activate. Eat anything. Geyer Engineer. And I think the Swirling Torrent should probably mark a concession from the opponent. Alright, so let's just go for it. Doesn't matter here. They don't have any tokens. Just target both their guys. Attack for, I guess it's only five, so they're not just dead. They can play both their threats again. One, two, three. Yeah, they can replay both these creatures. They're going to be at seven. What? <laughs> the zero one fairy duelist. <laughs> uh, usually the spirit killer. 
No, that just gives me another creature in the graveyard. Oh, that's so not great. I just noticed my opponent's avatar is uh, Vanifar. I didn't know you could have Vanifar. Glenshire? Glenshire? Glenshire. I don't know. Ah, God, what a, what a, what a messed up card. Yeah, my opponent decides it's better to take two damage than to uh, put me another spirit in the graveyard. They might have to just play Aramunculus and adapt it instead of playing Chillbringer here to try and hold back my spirit. I can just start jamming my creatures in. i play my Archangel or Archway Angel. I'm just going to play Senate Griffin instead, actually. One, two, three, four, and that lets me leave up an activation. Kudos to the opponent for sticking this game out. Oh, let's just leave that on top. So they do get to eat a spirit here, but <laughs> they just have to trade the duelist. They still take three, go down to six. I'm going to Essence Capture their Chillbringer. Put a counter on... I guess a spirit token doesn't really matter. Oh, we don't have essence capture. What am I talking about? All right, I guess we'll just make a spirit instead. I don't know why I thought essence capture was actually in my hand. Just go and do this now. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> ah! <laughs> I can't even blame misclicking for that. I just straight up clicked it. The opponents reading the, they're like what? Yeah, I I clicked poorly. They're, they're reading it. I'll I'll oops them. Like man, I I really screwed up there. All right, there's the essence capture. Uh, if I attack with everything, Chillbringer blocks here. That eats. They take two. Let's just play Archway Angel and pass. Dog collapse. Bell haunt to the graveyard. Okay. Nah. Make another spirit here. Just don't be too hasty about how I'm clicking. All right. What did the opponent draw? Another guy or engineer? Arrestor's admonition on Senate Griffin. Um. Just bounce mine back in response. No, that no, we're not doing that. Just re let it resolve. Gateway sneak. I don't even care about that. So sure. All right, let's hit an actual creature this time. They have two left. Just Gateway Sneak is never getting through the Sphinx anyway, unless for some reason they double block the Sphinx, but they can't because they have to block at least one of these spirits. Um, let's just let's just go ahead and go for the win here instead of playing around forever. Let's uh, bounce one of these, consume the other one, <laughs> bounce back Dovin's Acuity, and attack for seven. This game was an embarrassment of riches. My opponent played through the entire thing, too, which is super respectful. Not respectable is the word I meant, but at the same time, like, either they have, like, some sort of out, because I'm at 24 life with all of this on board, or, um, you know, maybe they're just like, eh, my opponent has it, let them play it out, which is kind of cool, too. Uh, okay, so what 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 is this flower doing here? What do, <laughs> Does anybody else see this? What's going on? Um... Sagittars of Ollie again seem decent. Chillbringer, Aramunculus, you know, those two fairy duelists. I think that's enough to bring that in, just because I do have ineffective cards. Uh, the Viscopa Vampire. Do I want Clear the Minds? Well, I guess I should be asking, is anything in my deck actually really bad? I don't think I need Sentinel's Mark. I'll actually bring in a Clear the Mind, and sure, we'll run it back like that. And I'll see you for game two. Game two, uh, are we keeping this hand? We have a lot of blue sources, which gets us eyes everywhere and Dovin's Acuity. Yeah, I guess. Opponent's not super aggro, but they could just play a two drop. Hey, look at that. 
really pulling a lot of weight with this Dovin's Acuity, hopefully. <laughs> Blade Juggler, sure. Remember that time we put Blade Juggler in our uh, Azorius Control deck and then also splashed Sagittar's Volley in our Azorius Control deck? Y'all remember that? I remember that. Alright, Hybrid getting in there and opponent playing another creature would, you know, put a real clock on us. Alright, we have the Volley for that, but no green mana currently. Um, I'm going to play Acuity here. Drawing the card just better than Scrying right now. Two life matters at the moment. Bellhaunt, not as close to uncastable as it looks, but I'm falling behind on board. Opponent has counter magic up, presumably. Um, let's go ahead and play the eyes everywhere and pass. We have a lot of good stabilizing cards here if we hit mana. If my opponent counters eyes everywhere, I'm actually pretty happy with that. I would rather it hit a card that doesn't have an immediate board impact than hit a card uh, than hit a card that uh you know actually saves a slime bind sure slime bind doesn't even do much seven this could be eleven yeah this is so much damage I think I've got to just play Griffin hope I survive a turn hope I hit a mana for Swirling Torrent. Shark to Crab's not going to do it. And then try to figure out a plan from there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, not being able to block this turn is bad news, Bears, though. Ooh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, I'm just dead even if I draw a land now. Alright. Our hand was a little bit too slow that time. A little bit too slow. But uh, I'm not going to change anything about my deck. don't think I want anything else here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really have even... I guess maybe the Vampire stays in just to trade with something early, but they only showed us a couple two drops that this can even block. So I think I'm just going to keep it as it is and... Hope it works out. See you in game number three. A very similar hand to last time, except we're on the play this time, and Consecrate's pretty good against them, or Consume, rather. So we're going to go all the Acuity first, and then probably lock it, Consume. We'll see what we draw in between. There's a small chance I want to Consecrate just to bounce Acuity, but I highly doubt that's happening because Consume is pretty good against Simic. Uh, opponent did more sideboarding after that second game, by the way. I usually edit out all the sideboarding, or at least the little pauses in between matches, just to try and shorten it a little bit. All right, Guildgate was a fine draw. Get those out while I'm not doing anything else. Swirling Torrent's also decent against the opponent. My, my hand matches up fine here. Not like amazing or anything, but it matches up fine. Uh, still think I'm just playing Acuity. Sure, might actually just play that out next turn instead of the Locket. My opponent curves out again. I could be in a little bit of trouble. I'm Aramunculus coming down. Might be thinking kind of the same thing I was thinking. Do I play another creature or do I just hold up a counter spell? Opponent showed us Thought Collapse and Quench. All right, Senate Courier is fine. <laughs> but sure, play Juggler. Um, just play Locket plus Planes. Or I guess I could just play Griffin here. Hopefully, just scry into another land. Uh, blue, blue, white, white. But I won't be hitting a land drop if I keep that on top. Um, yeah, I'm going to put that Sphinx on the bottom a little bit begrudgingly. Alright, what you got, opponent? Nothing. I like that. I'll play a Locket. If my opponent wants to quench a Locket, I'm cool with it. Especially since I drew the, the black source off the Orzhov Guildgate. I don't need this locket to resolve. Okay. 
the, if you don't play a lot of Magic, that might seem like a dumb thing for my opponent to use the Quench on, but a lot of times cards like this, they just fall off as the game goes on. Like, there might not be another time where I just don't have two mana up, so a lot of times you just end up quenching the first thing you can. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna take some damage here, that's fine. Ooh, Archway Angel, but I can't cast it. A little bit of a bummer. Could consume now and get this Chillbringer. I could play Blade Juggler. Just assume I'm taking four, maybe five. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna consume now. And if my opponent wants to adapt their uh, due to my bobber, I've got answers to that. This gains me three life back as well. Yeah, there's a chance they just play six land, adapt sore form, attack for seven. Or another sore form hybrid is also a card they could have. Basic land, untapped mana source. Tapped mana source I'll take, I suppose. Um, I guess we just pass with Thought Collapse up here. They didn't have the sixth land last turn. Dang, they're on all removal though. Slimebind I think is okay. Yeah, Slimebind's fine here. Six Source would be bad because then they can just free roll both uh, Sora Form hybrids. I guess they can already do that, right? This is a block I can make though. Archway Angel would be awesome if I can resolve it here, but it looks like the opponent's got some amount of interaction. Ooh, that's also good. Do I try to bait them with the Angel, with the Swirling Torrent? With what? They already used a Quench, but they could easily have a Thought Collapse, and they don't have a sixth land, so they're clearly, like, sandbagging something. Alright, I think of the spells in my hand, I would be... Maybe it's the Angel? I don't 100% know here. Alright, the Torrent resolves. I think they would counter that if they had a counter spell. <sighs> this still lets them keep up stupid Thought Collapse if they have it, though. I'm going to run out Blade Juggler here. Or maybe just the angel. They'll definitely counter the angel. Oh, they could have essence capture. No, they they don't have a counter spell, so ethereal absolution is probably good to go. One problem though is if they draw a sixth land, they can easily just uh, soar form hybrid. Okay, sure. I'm fine with the wall mages binding here. All right, yeah, they might just adapt here. No. And we are falling behind. Absolution might not do it, but we're going to resolve it. Maybe get some value out of it. Might be too slow, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thinking about playing Blade Juggler and actually trying to Thought Collapse the other Sora Form hybrid. Because this gets a little bit nasty if uh, another hybrid comes down. Lock it. Doesn't quite do it. We really need to draw um, one of our bounce spells, our uh, Arrestor's Admonitions. I'm going to take this hit, I think. Could block with Senate Griffin. Yeah, I'll block with Senate Griffin, because if I resolve Ethereal Absolution, I can block this Courier forever. Alright, let's go for the Thought Collapse here. That does put another creature in my opponent's graveyard as well. Alright, what else you got, opponent? Yeah, Arrestor's Admonition, I think, is one of the best cards I can draw here. Gets back Acuity, resets this thing. That doesn't do it. All right, we can play Absolution and lock it here. And we'll take a hit for five. And then we can at least make chump blockers until we start drawing stuff, I think. 
So I think we're fine, depending on what our last opponent's last two. No, exposed to daylight. Oh man, why were they holding that so long? Did they know we had absolution in our deck? Did we play it last game? I don't remember. Wow, that's gonna come down with haste. Wow, this game is probably over now. No blocks. Oh, I, they probably brought it in for our other stuff. Okay, Chillbringer is a live card. Um, one, two, three, four. Unfortunately, we have to <laughs> we have to chump block something, don't we? So I guess we just draw first. Basilica Bell Haunt, huh? Alright, so if we play Bell Haunt, we gain some life. I can double block here and die to those, so that doesn't work. I think I just have to play Chillbringer and go block, block. Hope my opponent's last card isn't more interaction. Um... Yeah, my opponent must have been holding on to that um, Exposed to Daylight to wait until Dovin's Acuity came back to my hand, but they just got a better target by waiting. If they have a bounce spell here, I'm dead. Sure. Looks like opponents... Oh, clear the mind. Okay. Well, that doesn't immediately kill us. Looks like whatever this is kills us, though. Oh, vigilance. Okay, that also doesn't kill us. So yeah, we block here, block here. We don't die. Into Geyer Engineer. Okay. Well, that probably kills us. What are our options here? I guess we're not a hundred percent dead. We do have to double chump. Yeah, we we just don't have an answer at this point. Opponent got it. They got it. Ugh. Did we... I can't remember. Did we play Ethereal Absolution in that... Uh, yeah, we did. We played it in game one, right? We had that really long game. I'm getting the games mixed up because they all kind of... They're all like blue decks against each other. We take our first loss, though. I was hoping to go straight 5-0, but I think we can crawl up to the five wins here. We're going to play our best, and I'll see you in match five. All right, match five. We're down a game. Our unbeatable bomb was beaten. Uh, this is the type of hand that counters two things, and then it doesn't do anything else. <laughs> Um, we're also on the draw this time. Yeah, this is a, this is a hand, all right. Still think, ooh, yeah, I'm definitely going to play Gateway Pause here instead of keeping up Essence Capture. Another blue deck. No Rakdos in sight. All right, opponent's got their eyes everywhere. Uh, I think I can afford to just play, like, Dovin's Acuity here. Then next turn we can start playing Gilgates. Doesn't seem like we're at a point where we absolutely have to start jamming stuff. Oh, no, Basilica Bonhaunt, pretty nice against these decks. We'll see how I play against Eyes Everywhere. I, I tend to play pretty poorly against it. Mono blue, that doesn't seem likely. The old skitterbutt would have been nice to counter that. That might just kill us. Like, <laughs> we have nothing in our hand that interacts with it. I guess we go Orzhov Lockets into just Azorius Guildgate and pass. Excuse me. I guess this angel gains us a bunch of life. All right, they, there's more to the story. Opponent is green. Let's see if they want to get in there for five. Wouldn't be bad. I'm kind of tapped out. All right, they have a mammoth spider. Fine by me. So what am I doing here? Playing, I could play one, two, three, four. I could play Basilica Bell Haunt and one, two, one, two, Three, four. Yeah, I could play Basilica Bell Haunt and keep up um, Essence Capture. This doesn't block Skidreel, but at the very least it stops Mammoth Spider from attacking and gets a card out of their hand. Gains me three life back as well, kind of negates the attack from Skitterbutt here.
opponent discards a counter spell. Got so much so much countering going on today. So Skitteriel, oh, attacking with Mammoth Spider as well. Just gonna block. Is there also a combat trick? No? Okay. Alright, what else is going on here? Territorial Boar. There's a card like this in the next set, except it actually gets like a plus one counter instead of <laughs> just a plus one. So I can play Sphinx, uh, White, White, Blue, Blue, and I can hold up Essence Capture, or I could just play Arcway Angel. I think I want to play this Sphinx and maybe just go for a double block on Skitteriel. Although, very possible they just have some sort of counter spell. Could also just play my Arcway Angel here and attack for three. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. This gains me 8 life. Uh, I guess the Belhan also just holds back all their non-Skitter Eel creatures. I would love to uh, untap from this point with Thought Collapse. Scries to the top I don't like. I do not appreciate Scries to the top right now. You, Denorms, are going to have to be scrying to the bottom for this game. Alright, I'm assuming Skitteriel's attacking. I'm just never taking this double block with open mana. Wouldn't mind drawing an Arrestor's Admonition get Dovin's Acuity back. Windstorm Drake, sure. Doesn't actually do too much. Ooh, that's a fantastic draw. That just eats Skitteriel, puts us kind of at parity. And I can keep up Thought Collapse, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this seems good. No, 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 cancel. Okay. <laughs> Ooh! All right, this this is actually pretty dope. Now we're just sitting here at parity. My opponent does have the eyes everywhere, but I've got a pretty good hand as well. Um, could actually attack with Arcway Angel. I have higher life total than them, so I'm winning the race right now. Oh, Mammoth Spider can block. Right, duh. Alright, look, uh, there's a reason that I'm playing from my computer at home and not playing in the Pro Tour, okay? Mythic Championship, if you will. It is because I attack my flyers into my opponent's reach creatures, okay? That might have something to do with it. So if my opponent plays a creature, I'll happily use Essence Capture and just keep my Thought Collapse. If not, um... Oh yeah, uh, I guess I can't block now. Yeah, that was dumb. I'm I'm not I'm not uh not okay with my uh plays this game. They were not impressive. All right, just play like an expensive five drop slime bind. Do I care? Probably not. I can sit back on blocking duty. <clears throat> Basically, just gave my opponent three free damage. <clears throat> it's nice that they feel they have to deal with the angel though sentinel's mark oh well, i guess that doesn't actually do anything we're gonna play our sphinx and i would like to tap this again not sacrifice white white blue blue actually let's tap this blue keep the opponent guessing diversify the mana we have open to give our opponent less information about what we could have at least make it more likely that we have some other stuff. Am I on full control? Do they want me to counter my own spell? Alright, now if my opponent attacks, which they really can't because they made an eternal blocker out of my Archwing Angel, Arcway Angel, then my Sphinx can get suited up with the Sentinel's Mark. Scry to the bottom. Okay. I think at some point we'll see our opponent just play 6 land and activate Eyes Everywhere. Maybe. Maybe not. They play... 
um, a creature here, and I essence capture it. This goes up to a 5-4, be 6 toughness with Sentinel's Mark. This seems like a poor attack, actually. Maybe it's fine. I, I don't really know what the opponent was going for there. Ooh, that's really good. Unfortunately, I can't protect it at all. I think I'm going to just go Sentinel's Mark on my Sphinx and attack into this Mammoth Spider. Try to bait some sort of removal or counterspell from the opponent. And then I'll just try and hold uh, Swirl and Torrent in hand for when my opponent activates the uh, Eyes Everywhere to get my creature back. Nice. I gain 5 as well. I can play Locket here. Yeah, I can play Locket. But I need to tap this. Doesn't matter what mana I'm making here. Alright, cast my Locket. Locket's for days. One to the top. If we ever see our opponent play a 6 land, that means they scryed their land to the top, which means they really want it. Oh, Simic Ascendancy, huh? Uh, that's pretty good, but they only have one green mana. This costs three mana, including one green, to activate, so sure. All right, can I Swirl and Torrent with Thought Collapse back up? One, two, three, four, five, six. I can, so I think I just want to get rid of these and attack with these guys. Um, what it, it, do, it really does not want me to use my lockets here, but this is fine. So, boom, boom. This also, I mean, they can scry whatever card they want to the bottom. I want this on top, no, I want this on top of the library just to give them the option to scry it to the bottom, because I don't really want to deal with that. The best part here is if I don't have to protect my, uh, spell, like if I don't have to use my counter spell, I get to just hold up my essence capture for whichever creature they decide to replay. Alright. Alright, Spider stayed on top. They're just going to replay Spider. I'm going to Essence capture it. Yeah, I'm just going to Essence capture that and put a counter on... It doesn't really matter on the Bell Haunt just to make it so they're both super lethal the turn after. They have to chump on my turn. And we have a quench. My opponent's mana screwed. They probably, you know, scryed a bunch of lands to the bottom, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, I guess, actually, I could have just cracked one of my lockets to try and find an Arrestor's Admonition and gone for game there, give my opponent one less draw step. Sure, scry to the top. This might just be the sixth land to activate eyes everywhere. It is, it is. Or cast a six drop, it's just going to get countered. So this has to be eyes everywhere on Sphinx, I think. No, all right, opponent had an out there. Fair enough. Um, it's another blue deck. Just... Don't really want anything. The stupid vampire. I hate this vampire in my deck. I'm taking it out every time. All right, let's bring in a clear the mind call today. <laughs> See you in game two. All right, we've had a lot of uh, hands like this. I can pro well, I might be able to uh, cycle consecrate if I get the chance, but I'm gonna keep it. Third land lets us do quite a bit. That is not a third land. Drawing a guild gate next turn would be nice. All right, Simic's Tendency early doesn't bother me too much. That's the third land as well. Nice. In fact, I would love my opponent to just dump some mana into that. Sylvan Brush Strider. We don't care too much about our opponent's life total, so that's fine as well. Um, I could go walk it here. I could just go Acuity. I think I'm just going to gain the two and draw. Okay, Slimebind's fine. I guess this is a little good against Slimebind. Maybe not, like, amazing or anything, but just fine. Okay, my opponent's going to go all in on Sylvan Brushstrider? Sure. 
All right, so make Guildgate. Drawing Guildgates is good. I think I'm just going Arrestor's Admonition here, right? This gives me my Dovin's Acuity. Basically wastes my opponent's whole last turn. I'm going to have to discard for turn, though, aren't I? No, because I'm... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to discard for turn. Uh, what am I discarding here? Locket? I think I'm just pitching the locket. I like all my cards. I'd love to draw a black source for this consume. Okay. Well, if we draw a basic land, we'll probably just play Chillbringer. If not, we'll play Guildgate plus maybe Slimebind that thing. That's a black source. I kind of like it. Um, yeah, I'm going to go lock it into Slimebind on the Griffin. There's no way my opponent activates Ascendancy. This might even bait a Counterspell, which would be nice. Oh, actually, let's let's let him attack. All right, let's go ahead and bind the slime, if you know what I mean. All right, so no reason they should be activating ascendancy here. Gateway sneak, solid. Don't really want to consume a gateway sneak. We'll probably just Chillbringer it. Hopefully I don't get quenched. That would be pretty bad. All right, get out of here, gateway sneak. You're responding with something? Oh, respond, sure. Okay. Fine by me for them to use a slime bind there. Any big creature is going to get consumed here. Anything they put too many counters on the Ascendancy with. And I've got quite a bit of card draw. Oh, what? Okay. Well, good thing we have consume because I'm not bouncing that. Oh, maybe I do bounce it. And then, I, oh no, because it's a cast trigger. Yeah, it's got four counters. Oh my god, am I going to lose to Simic Ascendancy? Uh, no, let's just consume that bad boy. Yeah, I will consume your soul. Gain me four life. Uh, probably just play Dovin's Acuity here. If they want to get through a Gateway Sneak, they need to either play a Gate or Kill Chillbringer, which they've already put Slime Bind on. I guess they could put two counters on it, which I would be okay with because it uses all their mana for the turn. All right, no gate. That's step one. Yeah, I'm definitely just going to block gateway sneak here. If they want to put two counters on it, then whatever. This needs 20 counters. That's... Okay, they, I guess they didn't want to kill Chillbringer. Here comes Skitter Eel again. Opponent's playing a lot of creatures. I mean, <laughs> they're getting me with the creatures here. Let me have a slime bind. Play just my Arcway Angel and start trying to kill them, I suppose. They're at 26. Yeah, that seems reasonable. This game's made 6 life. I'm at 30. Oh my god. <laughs> I would actually literally love if I lost to Simic Ascendancy. I wouldn't even be upset. Wouldn't even be upset. Oh, they're just going to kill my... Oh, bounce the angel. Huh. Okay. Oh, bounce an angel gets them in more damage, but I just gain more life. And tap Chillbringer. Sure. So that's not good for me. That means Gateway Sneak's getting in there. I'm falling behind. Falling behind, that's for sure. All right, that's a decent draw. Let's me keep up Essence Capture and Quench. Um, oh, one more, huh? Do get to gain all this life back. 
Dang, they drew a quench as well? Like, all right, I guess I have to quench their quench. It's a little annoying. Oh, we get to bounce the acuity with our quench? That never happens. Use the counter spell to bounce acuity. That's that's fantastic. All right, gain a million. Life totals still aren't going anywhere. Opponent's on eight mana. One more, and they can start triple activating ascendancy. So yeah, they might they, they might be able to get there with ascendancy this game. Windstorm Drake is fine. I assume, I mean, Skitter Eel and Bush Strider can attack. I'll go ahead and block here. Any creature I, oh no, I need to block Gateway Sneak. What am I doing? That's stupid. All right. Don't care about the damage here. Ugh, that, I should have blocked Gateway Sneak. That seemed like a mistake with them attacking all in anyway, but <laughs> that's fine. All right, we have a bunch of counter spells active here, but we don't really have any damage on board. So I think I think well, cast Acuity. One two three. Cast Arrestor's Admonition, and then Essence capture something on the swing back. Sure, hit and lands is fine here. The gig's going to be up, though, when I don't play a... Um, Dovin's Acuity again. Two, three. All right, let's bounce Skitter Eel, I suppose. Maybe Windstorm Drake? Nah, let's just get Skitter Eel out of here. God, this is at seven. I haven't dealt any real damage to my opponent yet. All right, Swirling Torrent seems good. I guess I should get in some damage, but I can block Gateway Sneak with Chillbringer. Again, I'm not... Oh no, what? Stop that! <laughs> uh, that's so terrible. I'm going to lose to Simic Ascendancy. Do the same thing my opponent did there. Just throw my chill. Draw a card. I'm like, here, draw a card. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Simic lock, it's fine. Might slime bind the gateway sneak here. Oh, I don't think they should put that down their best creature, right? That means they're not casting anything, though? Is that even that bad for me? Four, five, six, seven, eight damage. It's not negligible. All right, they're going to just put another counter on something. On the same creature, huh? All right, that makes my Swirl and Torrent better. They tapped out completely as well. Alright, get in there, Gateway Sneak. Kind of want to just slime bind Gateway Sneak now that I know I'm not... Uh, they, I, I don't need to hold a counter up this turn. I still take the 8. Alright, Sphinx of New Provs, fine draw. I think I'm supposed to go Swirl and Torrent these two. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that lets me keep up both my counter spells. One of my counter spells, I should say, not both. I need to kill them before they can activate this 11 more times. All right, Chili B, sit back, please. Let's go ahead and swirl the torrents. Doesn't matter which one we put where. And we'll pass the turn. Again, my opponent knows about Dovin's Acuity, so they've got to imagine I have a counterspell in my hand if I'm not playing Dovin's Acuity. Opponent's at 20 life. All right, I like Bounce Your Own Gateway Sneak. That's very respectable. Yeah. 
opponent with six mana here as well. Probably better for them to cast two small creatures than it is for them to cast one big creature if they think I have a counter spell. Or maybe even just use removal on the Archway Angel while they can. How many cards do they have? 16? I don't think we're milling them. <laughs> God, all of these games have been so grindy. Do I care about Bush Strider? Nah, Bush Strider can resolve. That one gains some life, but I would rather hit this Gateway Sneak here. Unless they just pass the turn, that's fine too. Oh, Skitter Eel. I'll definitely Essence Capture Skitter Eel. Put a counter on Archway Angel. So let's up the clock a little bit. Alright, so we can go Acuity, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, play the Sphinx. I think I'm just better off playing Sphinx this turn. Um, and holding up Thought Collapse. Might even just Chump with Chillbringer. But this doubles the clock. Absolution would be pretty good draw too. Just to up the amount of damage I can put out. <clears throat> probably not blocking and probably not countering anything except a flyer steeple creeper. Do I care about steeple creeper? No. That's four mana to give it flying. Uh, I will counter Windstorm Drake. I don't think I'll counter Gateway Sneak at this point. Alright, yeah. Let's counter Windstorm Drake. Opponent can actually still just cast a Gateway Sneak here. They have the locket. One unknown card in their hand. Milling three lands. Alright, you're welcome, opponent. You're welcome. Alright, here comes old Gateway Sneak. I'm not blocking this turn because I would like that Chillbringer just jump in front of a Gateway Sneak. But we get to aid our opponent. They're on a three turn clock. Granted, they have Steeple Creeper, which is a little annoying. Ooh. Well, let's cast Dovin's Acuity first. Alright, let's cast Clear the Mind. Target myself. Into Blade Juggler? Sure, I guess that blocks on the ground. We'll attack with everything that can attack. And sure, I'll cast a Blade Juggler for spectacle cost. Into, ooh, a slime bind. That was actually <laughs> one of the best things we could have hit with two mana open here. Now let's see how our opponent wants to go about this. I'm probably going to end up slime binding the gateway sneak. Really, Steeple Creeper is getting counters? Old Creepy Steepy? My opponent can activate this ascendancy four times. Oh, but Steeple Creeper is one of the only things they have that can actually block my uh, flyers, so why attack with Steeple Creeper? Maybe they don't plan on attacking with it, but then why activate now? This is on 11 counters. My opponents put 11 plus 1 counters on their creatures this game. This has been a really fun series of games. I know it's going on forever, because <laughs> we're just playing a bunch of blue mirror matches, but this has been very fun. Alright, what's next? A fight spell? Galloping Lizrog! Oh my god. That's insane. <laughs> this is going to be 4 counters on the Lizrog? Is that right? And then the Ascendancy is going to get four counters. It's at 15. Opponent just makes a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. <laughs> All right, Blade Juggler can jump in front of anything here. Um, sure. We do need... I think we need to draw something here to still be in this game though my opponent can go up to unless they draw like another lizrog they can go up to nine count or 19 counters they can activate four times do i just slime by now to have the most use for my mana 
I think I do. I've got eight damage here. Eyes everywhere. Oh, eyes everywhere. Hold on a second. Does that... They can activate it in again, though, right? All right, let me... One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let me draw. All right. Yes, Arrestor's Admonition. After we foolishly put our stupid thing on top of our deck. All right, um... So what's the point here? They have three. Let's assume no ball. I attack them for eight. And they activate this uh, four times. They have uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage, but I'm going to be able to block two of them if I need to. So I think this is fine to just um, hold eyes everywhere. They also need to get to their upkeep, right? At the beginning of your upkeep, yeah. So even if they get to 20, they don't automatically win. Now I can keep a Rester's Admonition as kind of like a get-out-of-jail-free card here if something really bad happens. Or I can wait until my next turn and just bounce Steeple Creeper so it can't block my flyers. So unless my opponent's card is something really good or they crack their locket, I think we're going to get this. They need to deal with two of my flyers as well. If they just go all in on a creature here, that doesn't do anything. What a game, what a game. <laughs> uh, this has been a very impressive set of games. What a way to go out to, right? Um, to go out of this format. This has been great. Very few ill-gotten inheritances. I think I've countered one. No ethereal absolutions from the opponent, as it should be. We get to actually play against this. This has 15 counters. All right, so opponent decides the ascendancy win not happening. So we crack the locket, seven mana, three cards. What you got? And really, probably only two relevant cards, since their last card wasn't something worth going in on. They kill one of my flyers. They still got to deal with the other one or have four mana up for Steeple Creeper. Something like Swirl and Torrent would be insane. Okay. What's, uh, what's, what, what do we got, opponent? <laughs> they did draw Swirl and Torrent. So three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, is there a way to kill them with eyes everywhere next turn? Return. It doesn't matter which one's going where, right? Oh man, what a game. <laughs> what a game. That Archway Angel gains me 8 life, though. Alright. I guess I can scry the Sphinx to the bottom. Go down to five. <laughs> um, I don't really want to give my opponent the eyes everywhere. All right. Sphinx to one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. I gain eight life up to 13. I don't think I'm dying. And then this still puts my opponent to what? Any flyer is lethal. I'll have two lethal threats. So I think I just keep the Sphinx on top and replay both my guys. All right, you're up. I'm at 13, so we're, we're kind of back in the same position. But the difference this time is I don't have uh, the get out of jail free card. Granted, my opponent also doesn't get extra draws. They have, what, two cards left? Seven cards in their library? All right. We're <laughs> waiting again. This has been an impressive game. All right. This can... Four, five, six, seven. Is there something my opponent can have that deals six? I guess either flyer... They can activate this... Uh, they have 12 mana. They can activate it four times. 
So that's four extra damage. So that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I should just throw Chillbringer in front of this and then block the gateway sneak as I normally would. Because if they dump all their mana to kill my archway, archway angel, I still have the Sphinx up that's lethal. Okay, I, I like seeing this because this doesn't do very much. And they have to activate two more times at least. <laughs> Putting counters on Lizrog. <laughs> that bad boy has 19 counters on it. And that is lethal. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Keep it on top. We're casting it. No! <laughs> no! Oh, man. Come on. Let me cast my bomb rare, please. What a what a what a ridiculous game! I wonder if my opponent could have played in a way that actually killed me, because I didn't think that thing had 19 counters. <laughs> All right, we've got one more match, either win or loss. We're done, but I'm pretty happy with this video set altogether. And I hope you're uh, having fun too. If you're still here, make sure you subscribe below. Let me know what you think of the matches, and let's get into the final match. All right, now this is mana I like to see, although the essence capture looks a little awkward. We can turn for a shark to crab here. We're against Pronstar. Very lewd name, sir and or ma'am. They take a mole. So, I mean, we're not doing anything for a while. We have an arrestor's admonition in case they like, uh... Oh, hello to you too, Pronstar. Can I, can I say hello? Thank you. All right. We'll get the Simic Guildgate down. I don't mind using Essence Capture as just a Essence Scatter if you don't have a creature on board. It's actually a little awkward sometimes when you're playing Simic and you have like a Terramander and then you Essence Capture. You don't really want to put a plus one counter on your own guy. Impassioned Orator. Sure. We'll go ahead and play. I guess Planes is more important for our deck. And then we'll just ship the turn. Black White. Also probably a decent matchup here. Would love to capture something and just play a shark to crab here. That'd be pretty nice. Yeah. Get jammed on. If they just pass the turn, that's fine too. Like, I'll just play shark to crab. Actually, essence capture is pretty dope with shark to crab, isn't it? Oh, never mind. For, forget all the combos. Let's... Let's, uh... Counter a Blade Juggler. Eh, that would have been pretty good. Alright, let's play Shark to Crab and make our opponent have a Mortify or um, Final Payment, something along those lines. Undercity's Embrace? Okay, that's a pretty good answer. I found people rag on this card, but it's good against green decks. Not that I'm really a green deck. It's actually really good against me. All the creatures I play, I kind of need them to stick. Uh, so here, I think we're just playing Eyes Everywhere and passing. Which isn't great, but I can afford to take a little bit more damage off this, and I can slime bind anything big that comes down. Opponent's down to three cards. Grasp and throw really one of the cards I don't want to see. Yeah, that's fine. We'll slime bind that one. Archway Angel. Um, I think I'd have to bottom that one. Although it gains us back a bunch of this life. Four right now. Yeah, I just need to hit land, so let's not be super greedy here. All right, we can go lock it into slime bind on Grasp and throw. Impassioned Orator will have dealt 10 damage. Putting the Angel on the bottom hurts my soul, but it's okay. It's okay. Alright, let's go ahead and bind the slime again. Good old Seb McKinnon bat throw thing. And what else you got, opponent? More stuff? Debtor's Transport. I was going to say, I really hope my opponent doesn't have Debtor's Transport. Transport, because that's going to be an annoying card for me to deal with. Dovin's Acuity, one, two, three. I want that. <laughs> I don't know if I should keep it, though. <clears throat> I guess I can cast Arrestor's Admonition first, or take seven. I'm going to keep it, I think. Although it just draws me into the next card. I'm shipping so many good cards to the bottom here. I suppose I can also just play a Blade Juggler and trade for the transport. 
This is also a matchup where Eyes Everywhere is a little bit better um, because my opponent doesn't have blue mana, that I know of at least. So uh, they're not going to be able to trade back for something. So I really just get to steal the best permanent and then... Oh, that's really annoying. That's very annoying. They should attack with Orator too, I think. All right, well, I'll go down to three with my Angel on the bottom. So, ooh, Sentinel's Mark's actually quite good here. So I think I'm going to go Sentinel's Mark. They can double block this. I don't think they will. And then I can Arrestor's Admonition the Transport to buy me a little bit of time. Yeah, if they want to trade both their creatures here, I'm quite okay with this. I guess they could also block with Grassman Throw, which is cool. All right, let's go ahead and play the Admonition before we, yeah, before we uh, play a land in case we draw a gate, which we did. All right, transport probably coming back down. That it is. I'm gonna avoid using eyes everywhere on it, just because I don't want my opponent having scries right now if I can avoid it. All right, guild gate can go to the bottom. I'm looking for ethereal absolution now. It's just kind. Ooh, ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Now my blade juggler. Can I? I can attack through all of this, right? And they can trade Debtor's Transport and one of these other ones. And then the Afterlife tokens just die. <clears throat> sure. This leaves them with one power on board. Oh, no, I, I thought they were going to go for the other block. I lose my Blade Juggler here, but they don't get the Afterlife tokens. They gain two life, but whatever. All right, you have one power on board. Grasp and Thrill getting in there. And now I can sit back and play the game of not having to cast anything. Slime Bind go to the bottom. <clears throat> Consecrate Consume, not necessary here. I can make two Spirit, so I think this game is actually just close to over now unless they have a random Exposed to Daylight in the main board. I could lose to an ill-gotten inheritance as well. Carry an imp, sure. Uh, let's see if they want to target something in their graveyard, because then I'll just respond by eating it. Nah, they, they decide to go for the correct play. Alright, opponent's up to a million life, approximately. Alright, let's just go ahead and make our spirits now. Yeah, this game's close to over. I guess they only have three creatures in the graveyard, but that's probably going to be enough. I might even cast Swirl and Torrent just to walk them out of another draw. Maybe. Nah, that doesn't seem that great. Uh, I will keep that on top. And I'll just attack with both, because I can make one more spirit here. And keep up Thought Collapse. Alright, this, this game's pretty close to over, barring some really fantastic card like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sure, I'll just counter that. Maybe get a concession out of it. Also puts another creature in the graveyard, plus whatever they mill. But that that could... I guess that's not even useful. Like, its ability doesn't matter. The afterlife doesn't do anything. Yeah, I shouldn't have countered that. It's a 3-3 three, three on board, I guess, is something. I could have just consumed it. Alright. We have an army. We're winning with one card, which is not not something I normally enjoy doing, but uh, it feels good. It feels real good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jam with all my spirits, play a Viscopa Vampire, and keep up an activation here. 
Yeah, it definitely should not have countered Knight of the Last whatever. No more counter spells though. All right. All right, all right, all right. Our bomb stole that game. We were really far behind there too. Yeah, the Ethereal Absolution, ironically, is extremely good against, uh, whatchamacallits, against, um, Afterlife Tokens. Which makes me kind of want the Volley again over the stupid Vampire. And do I want to clear the mind? Do I want to clear the mind? Don't love Blade Juggler. Eh, let's just run it back. This could be the final game. I will see you in game two. Alright, we got us a really slow hand here again. Doesn't do anything until turn 5, maybe. Um, sure. The Sentinel's Mark. I did mention it when we were drafting and putting our deck together that it could just be bad, right? We don't have that many creatures. Yeah, if our opponent curves out, it doesn't matter what we end up playing. That's one of the weaker cards they could have played. We showed last game we don't care much about our opponent's life total. All right, you're up, opponent. That being said, uh, Blade Juggler is going to be my first play of the game on turn five, and it even deals a damage to me. All right, do you have your Blade Juggler this time? I don't have the counter spell. Uh, they do. Yeah, I'm going to fall way behind this game. <laughs> sure, six drop. All right, go ahead. Take five, five. Eh. Eh. Now, as, as stabilizing as our cards are, I mean, I guess this angel would gain us a lot of life. Our opponent also didn't cast anything there, which could be a save in grace. But what happens here? We take another five, we play a blade juggler. It gets eaten, we take another five, and we're at, what, two life there? I guess if they have nothing this turn... We could be okay. Okay, we we might be able to do something with this angel. Moving to duty, I might want to cast that instead, actually. Just to make sure I stay alive here. Yeah, I actually like the Dovin's acuity. I shouldn't have played a basic yet in case I draw a gate. Okay, we just drew a basic anyway. Sure, go ahead, opponent. Drawing a slime bind or something there would have been actually really good. Opponent with just like, what, seven spells in hand? None of them are creatures? They're just on all removal? That seems suspect. All right, so I think I play my angel, right? Maybe I can just consume. Or maybe I can swirl and torrent their two guys. Hmm. We've got options here. We've got options. I kind of like the swirl and torrent. They're not playing lands. They get to replay Blade Juggler, but that's fine. And this gives me an opportunity to maybe just draw another gate and gain two more life. All right, you're up. They might even have to discard for turn here if they uh don't. They, are they like sandbagging a land this whole time? That seems unlikely. They've got to have just like <laughs> either a bunch of five and six drops in their hand, or just like all removal spells. Oh right, they can't actually replay Blade Juggler. Yeah, they've got to have just a super expensive hand. So we go here into we can't. Yeah, we could play this into Blade Juggler. Gives them an opportunity to use removal, but draws us one card deeper. I guess we die to like a rest or zeal now, but we're not playing around a rest or zeal. This uh, means they have to also kill our blade juggler if they want to spectacle that thing out. It's really unfortunate for our opponent to not have drawn another land. I guess they've got four, but whatever. 
All right, got him to use an Undercity's Embrace on a Blade Juggler. That feels pretty good. We can Archway Angel. Oh, we can Archway Angel with Thought Collapse up. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, gain eight life back, go to 10, and now I feel decent. Because we've got Consume, we've got a counter spell, we've got another threat plus Sentinel's Mark. I'm going to block this for sure. We have been saved. The game's not over. Our opponent's got a million cards in hand, but we have been saved by our opponent just not hitting a fifth land. They've got, they must have just all removal spells in hand. Final payment, paying five. That is not a card you want to get final paymented. Paymented? Debtors transport to the graveyard. Plague White. Sure. Plague White, okay with me. Alright, I think we're going Sentinel's Mark here while we can, and then just play the Sphinx. There's some minor argument to use in Consecrate just to cycle Dovin's Acuity here. I would draw two extra cards this turn. But now I'm back up to 14. My opponent's at 12. Facing down two threats now. Alright, you've got your fifth mana. Hardcast Blade Juggler. I'm fine with it. Taking eight in the air. They're just on a two-turn clock now. This, this is absurd. They can't attack. They're going to take 8. I'm going to have a 4-6 blocker, and the game's over. Wow. The game is over because our opponent just fizzled on lands there. I would love to see what their hand is right now, just to kind of get an idea. Is it all Grasping Thralls and 6 mana cards? We went 5-1. What do you know? Ethereal Absolution went 5-1. That was one of the best drafts I've had in this format. I've got a screenshot of me with Shark to Crab and Ethereal Absolution. For how greedy our deck was, we didn't get mana screwed that often. Um, in fact, we didn't get mana screwed at all, and the colors worked out. But I'll go ahead and open these packs while we're filming, and then we'll say our goodbyes to Ravnica Allegiance. And uh, we'll look forward to our reviews for um, War of the Spark, which is going to be crazy. All right. Uh, I don't really care what I open out of these packs much, but it's kind of it's kind of cool. I like the graphics, you know. It's it's flashy, warms my little heart. Ooh, awaken the awaken the erstwhile. Not a bomb. And our last pack of Ravnica Allegiance has in it a Sphinx of Foresight. Another card I've never been able to draft, unfortunately. So that'll do it. Ravnica Allegiance is done. We had fun. Uh, people have their opinions about it. I think it's a great set overall. There are just a couple minor tweaks. I think the biggest ones are I would make Ilgon Inheritance an uncommon. I would swap the rarity on uh, um, Ethereal Absolution and the uh, Black White Angel, the Seraph of the Dawn, Seraph of whatever it's called, the Black White Mythic Rare. Feels like it could be rare and Ethereal Absolution should be mythic. I would probably tweak the gate cards a little to not be so powerful when they enter the battlefield because they are ridiculous gate colossus gate breaker ram the other ones i think are fine maybe the angel should only gain one life not two um and then yeah i, I think everything was balanced it was fun uh i've drafted every guild a number of times and i think uh just to kind of put a x uh, um, what did they say an asterisk on um the draft format i would rank the guilds with uh rakdos last um simic and Gruul kind of tied for second place, and then uh, Orzhov and um, Azorius kind of tied for third place, which is way different than I thought it would uh, end up when the format first started. But this video has been going on for a while now. I hope you enjoyed the matches, and if you're still here, please, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. Um, if you're listening to my voice right now, you've spent your time with me instead of some other magic content creator, and that means a big deal to me. Um, so thank you, and uh, find us on Twitter. Have a conversation, MTG underscore Manorox. Hope to hear from you there. That's going to go and wrap it up for this video and for Ravnica Allegiance. 
As always, my name is Timothy here with Manorox, and I will see you all next time.